the Hawkeyes. McCain deep in the pocket, middle screen, and he's got it to the down Brooks. 50, and a cross midfield. He may have the first down. Talked about the key for Iowa is Kyle McCann getting off to a good start. He's made a third down conversion on throwing the football, third down conversion scrambling, and now a big screen pass. So he's off the mark fast. Mike, we also need to mention to the Iowa faithful, Liddell Betts is such an integral part of this Hawkeye offense. Before the ball game, he tweaked the hamstring just a little bit. He did not start. He was on the sideline. He has come in and has run the ball, but they're trying to keep a very close eye on him. They can ill afford to have him on the sideline rather than on the field. No, Ron, he's the one guy that can change this game for Iowa because they outweigh the Texas Tech offensive line of Iowa against the defense line of Texas Tech, 20 pounds per man, so they need the running game and they need Betts. Mike, let's go to the sideline and check with Adrian Carson. He has more on Liddell Betts. What's the situation, big guy? Ron, Liddell did not warm up properly, and the coaching staff reminds me this sometimes happens when he have a month off between games. He came out full of adrenaline, full of energy, went through his paces, but he did not stretch properly. That's why he did stretch the left hamstring, did not pull it. He's about 80, 90 percent right now. He took ice five minutes before he came out on field but he's not going to be 100 percent and that's going to hurt iowa's offense okay you see jeremy allen in the backfield along with aaron gribby number 34 who's a sophomore out of ames and they come straight ahead with uh, the running play short yardage smith uh, steps up into the hole to make the tackle aaron gribby, the ball carrier. Ron, you talked about kyle mccann he's had a roller coaster career as the quarterback at iowa in his career he's thrown 23 touchdown passes 23 interceptions it tells you a little bit about him 14th in the nation in pass efficiency but he likes the challenge the coaches feel like feel very strongly about him starting today brad banks number seven will see some action in the first quarter or early in the second well mccann's off to a good start he's three of very three good. for 22 yards and a key pass to tim dodge to pick up a critical third down here's a pass to dallas clark the tight end and he'll take it inside the 40 to the 37 yard line now let's make a point about one thing mike and, and take this story a little further. 9.37 left in this opening quarter. Iowa wants to play ball control because Texas Tech is so explosive with their passing game. And, and they're doing a good job with the throwing game. Now, Kevin Curtis, the safety blitz, Kyle McCann threw that ball right on the money. So Kyle McCann really has started strong. Well, he really has, and that, that's uh, the book on him. The coaches said when he starts off hot, hang on. He can be as warm as anybody. And conversely, if it's a slow start, he may flounder. Tenth play of the drive. Good play action. Throws it complete out on the flat to Hill. And Hill will go inside the 35 and down to the 30-yard line. Acock comes over to make the tackle. Let's take a look at these starting lineups, which we did not have an opportunity to do. In the backfield, Lavelle Betts and Jeremy Allen. Dallas Clark, who caught the ball just a moment ago. Fine, fine tight end. Oliver and Hill, the wide receivers. Dallas Clark is the guy, the tight end. He's a good that weapon, isn't Kyle he? McCann likes to go to and must catch situations. 11th play of the drive, and this is exactly what Kurt Ferentz and his offensive staff wanted to see happen. They want Texas Tech on the sideline watching and not out with that offense flaring away. Straight ahead, Grebbing will take it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line, short of the first down. Smith and Hawkins, they're on the stop. And this offensive line, they've had a lot of injuries this year. They got Steinbach back. He uh, had a shoulder that was knocked out. Cunningham on the right side and David Porter. Uh, big group. And right now, they are doing an outstanding job of uh, keeping Texas Tech at bay. Yeah, Aaron Hunt is the best defensive lineman on Texas Tech's football team. And so far... Iowa has not blocked the defensive line the running game. Third down. They need to take it to the 27-yard line to keep this one going. Grebbing, right side. Big opening. He has the first down inside the 25 and near the 23. Acock in the secondary. But this is an impressive start for the guys from Iowa. The linebackers starting for the Red Raiders today. 
Smith, Bluejins, and Jonathan Hawkins. And Mike, how about the secondary? One of the best players in the country, probably nobody knows about, Kevin Curtis, the safety. A great All-American football player. He is out of Lubbock High School. 13th play of the drive as Chris Oliver comes in motion and they keep it on the ground. Drevin tries to turn the corner. He does inside the 20, down around the 18 yard line. Hit by Saylor, pushed out of bounds over there, along with Akon. Well, when you talk to the coaches of Iowa, they say, when we start strong, we're, we're a good football team. Times we have not started strong, we have lost. And uh, they haven't played well away from home. They had one win uh, away from home against Northwestern. Ken O'Keefe, the offensive coordinator. Yeah, in fact, Mike, there was a number that went that before they won at Northwestern, that they had gone 1,139 days without a win on the road. And this is an away game for them because Texas Tech has more people here. No question. Over 35,000 wearing red and black here this afternoon at the Alamo Dome. Derby again. Oh, buddy. He gets rocked down hard. Hopkins is a man down at the bottom. And then Hunt came over the top to help sandwich on him, and it's a loss. Mistake by Kyle McCann because they moved the outside linebacker, Jonathan Hawkins, on the line of scrimmage. Nobody could block him, so he had a free tackle. Mike, you and I talked before this ball game. Everyone that speaks of the offenses because they're so doggone good on both sides, Iowa and also Texas Tech. But the defense, the guys that make the best adjustments this afternoon, I think those are the ones that walk away with this win. I agree with that, and special teams will be big today. Dallas Clark, the tight end in motion. Play action. Here's big pressure. They throw it back to Clark. Good catch. And goes inside the 20. And I'll tell you, he shows you what kind of athletic ability he has. Flugens is there to make the tackle. He was a walk-on outside linebacker, and he kept watching him in practice and saying, hey, this kid's a great athlete. Let's put him on offense. Special teams is where they first got their inkling that he should be on the field. Quarterback and linebacker in the high school makes a great catch here. Gets his feet up under him, almost picks up the first down. So the field goal attempt is going to be of 36 yards, Kading from that far hash mark. And David Bradley, the putter, is the holder. Low pass, plenty of distance on the kick. Got it. Iowa takes a chunk off the clock in his opening quarter, and they go on the scoreboard first. 545 left. Three to nothing. Hawkeyes. City, San Antonio. Welcome back to the Sylvania Alamo Bowl presented by Siemens. Boy, what a drive by the Iowa Hawkeyes to open this football game. They used over nine minutes, nine minutes and 15 seconds, 70 yards, 16 plays, and we talked about bets. Mikey's trying to get that hamstring loosened up. They need him, Ron, in the running game. Kenny with the 36-yard field goal. He will kick it off. Avery McCann, number 36. Standing about two yards deep to the end zone. Very high, good coverage kick on a kickoff here. From one yard deep, it's McCann. And he gets muscled down short of the 15-yard line. Excellent coverage. George Lewis is the man who made the tackle. Well, Mike Gottfried, we are about to get an idea of Kiff uh, Cliff Kingsbury and his abilities. And what is it about coaches' sons and why they're so good as quarterbacks? Well, they live and die with the whys of why the coaching staff do things. So they understand. They watch tape and they live and die this football game. Well, Kingsbury put up some outstanding numbers this year. I don't know if he's going to have a, a few butterflies today or not because he is from a small community that's only about 20 miles from San Antonio called New Braunfels, Texas. And he has got him here, but the numbers as far as relatives and friends. They open it up. Roberts. And this is what Texas Tech does. They throw the short dump passes, the pick out passes, and they absolutely drive you nuts. Here's a good look at Cliff, 6'4", 210. Very unassuming young man, and he has uh, really taken over at Tech. He's got Ricky Williams behind him and a four wide receiver set. Welker, Roberts, Page, and Carlos Francis. All these receivers catch the ball well. Ricky Williams running play to the right side and he'll have the first down. Only 5'8", 100 
96 pounds, but you see he can scoot the offensive line for the Red Raiders. Big group and a very good group. Loper, Heider, Cecil, Richards, and May. And something we're going to talk about as the afternoon goes on. How about the defense, Mike? And, Ron, they'll split out all over the place. Five-foot splits, and Aaron Campen, who has 17 tackles for loss, will feel like he's out of the place so wide. Look how wide these oh, splits are. These splits are unbelievable. <laughs> Right across the middle, as it complete, it's going to be a short game, but they'll take it to the 31-yard line. The linebackers, Steen Meyer and Fred Barr. How about the secondary? Bob Sanders, uh, 5'8", 194. They compare him Blaine Bishop from the Tennessee Titans in pro football. Hard hitter. I, you know, I know that uh, Coach Leach was at Oklahoma. They use wide splits, but these are the widest oh, ones I've ever wide. seen, Mike. And they throw the middle screen. Glover again. And Glover's going to go for a short game. It'll be third down at about six. Here's the key for Iowa tonight in this football game this afternoon. When the underneath receiver catches the football at three or four or five yards, make the tackle. Do not miss the tackle and turn it into a 10-yard reception. That's why tackling, and when you haven't tackled for a month, that becomes very important today. And I will tell you. Ricky, uh, I can't tell if it's a leg injury or if he just got his bell rung, but uh, he really was very wobbly when he got up. And now the trainers are not going to rush him off the field. And it would appear he's trying to get the cobwebs out. Texas Tech offensive line, the screen pass, they kind of passively blocked there. Looked like he collided with yep. his own man, didn't it? They do keep looking down. He keeps flexing that right ankle. Now, we talked about the fact that Iowa just could not have Liddell Betts on the sidelines, just no. as Texas Tech can't have number two on the sidelines. No, it means way too much. Yeah, 92 pass receptions as a running back. That tells you a little bit about him. 726 yards rushing, so he's an integral part of this offense. We just talked about uh, Mike Leach, who uh, spent some time at Oklahoma. Second season at uh, Texas Tech. And uh, had an impressive season. Really, this team continued to improve greatly as the season went on. Third down. They need the 38-yard line. Kingsbury throws it complete. Close to the first down. He got it. That is uh, Mickey Peters, a sophomore out of Weatherford, Texas. He had 10 catches in the Northwestern game. Big target, 6-3, 201. Let's take a look at the splits. Now, here's when you're when you're a coach and you look at these splits right here, you always talk about run, run through the splits, the linebackers, and the defensive line. The defensive ends are so far out they do not become a part of the pass rush. I was going to say, they're not a part of the game, are they, as far as putting no. pressure on the quarterback? Dumps this one out in the flat. Peters again, and he'll turn the corner and step out of bounds. That's a gain of five. And this is, they don't run many running plays, but for all intent and purposes, that is a running play. That's it's a like running a pitch. play. Going back to the line splits, uh, the one thing you do when you split out like that, you invite the blitz. By the defense, Norm Parker doesn't want to take many chances of playing man coverage, but he's going to play a lot of zone in the secondary. Kingsbury, 5-of-5 five five to start the ball game. Scrambling, throws that one through. Very hard. It could have been intercepted. Welker was the intended receiver. Here's what you got to do a good job with your team. If you're Iowa, Norm Parker, the defense coordinator, and Kirk Ferentz, the head coach, they're going to complete a lot of passes. Just don't give them the big one. And trade three yards or five yards for a headache when you tackle them. That's the philosophy you have to have. And you can't get down when they catch the ball because they're going to throw it a bunch. Third down. They need to take it to midfield. Eighth play of the drive. Iowa leads it three to nothing. Kingsbury steps up in the pocket. Pressure is on. He's going to run it. And Kingsbury, boy, depends on the spot. I don't think he got it, Ron. Uh, by the spot, I'm seeing... On the far sideline. Yeah, far side. He's going to be close. No, he got, yep, gave it, it to us. It was the right foot. Yep. <laughs> and it was the right foot spot. And I would see the coaches because they feel like he didn't make it on that sideline. And they're moving those chains quick. Kirk Grants can't believe it. I couldn't believe it either. Watching 
Sunday fish will come out and come in from the sideline. Yellow line at midfield. Depends where his knee goes Ooh. down. His knee goes down about two yards from the yellow line, so he got a break. Kirk has something to uh, to complain about. Yeah, you forget that. Oh, it's just it, go on to the next over. play. Here they come <laughs> on the end around. The they throw just a little bit of everything. That's Francis uh, on that carry. They bring him off motion, turn and give him the ball. It, to me, the most difficult thing, if I'm Norm Parker, I haven't seen this in the Big Ten. You know, and, and to to make the adjustments they're going to have to make, like that to me is just, uh, that's a handful. Well, you just got to be patient. I, we talked, and I told you, one of the things I'd do is move Campman in on a guard. You know, if they're going to split that much, no, we're bring all four defensive ends, play them on those guards. A little quicker, less size. As you can see, number two, Ricky Williams back in the ball game. And they drop him right over the middle. Kingsbury frustrates that defensive front. He's going to run it again. And this time he got the first down. I don't think there's any question about that. Dalazola making the tackle. Adrian Karsten, let's check with you. Scary moment for the Texas Tech Red Raider offense when Rick Williams gave off. It exactly just had his belt run. He took him about four five plays just to get his back to his back. They actually checked the inside of his helmet run to see if there was any damage done. Nothing done on the inside of his head either, so he's back in the game. But wow. it just took him a few plays to <laughs> get the situation back again. I tell you what, Adrian, he looked like a boxer that had just taken a right cross and never saw it coming. <laughs> 11th play of the drive. This started back at the 14. Iowa's drive, 9 minutes and 15 seconds, started at their own 12. Kingsbury sets up the screen, and ooh, he got fortunate on that one. As Iowa was not fooled at all, Steen, one of the Hawkeyes that came through defensively and was right in the middle to mess things up. Yeah, you talked about Cliff Kingsbury being the son of a high school coach. He received very little interest from colleges out of high school, but he knew he could play. And you know, I saw a quote where the other day, he said, I knew I could be very good in college football. Nobody believed that old Texas Tech took a shot on him and he'll be a Heisman candidate next year. The thing that the coaches talk about, they say he lives in the film room. He loves it. This pass too high for Walker. Texas Tech crowd wanted interference. He got bumped. It's not going to be any. Yeah, he got bumped. Bob Sanders, number 33. They, they got bumped, but uh, Wes Walker was the receiver. But the ball was way overthrown. So let's see if they send Welker back in that area to get the completion. Now, to keep this drive going, they've got to go to the 29 and a half yard line. Well, only since three men. They drop eight. Throws this one for the end zone. I'm not sure the wisdom of this play. Tip incomplete at the five-yard line. Does he just do it up for grab? Pagel was almost there with the pickoff. I think sometimes you can get frustrated by so much zone coverage, and uh, Cliff Kingsbury got frustrated there and threw a high fly uh, baseball up to Carlos Francis. Now, Hal Mummy, who used to be the Kentucky coach, who uh, Mike Leach worked for, used to go on fourth down a lot, but uh, Mike Leach is going to punt the football. Wisdom. Clinton Greathouse, a junior out of Roswell, New Mexico, comes in. I don't think Iowa will see a punt tonight. Uh, I think they'll try to punt the ball inside the numbers, out of bounds, Ron. Will not let him return the football. Well, you can see that he's angled. Hill is such an outstanding return guy. Very, very high. Bear catch is signaled for and is made. And the flag's going to come down. Even though the player ran behind him, you still have to observe the six-yard safety barrier. 29 yards in the kick, but it serves the purpose. They'll scrimmage from just short of the 10-yard line. Please turn your attention to the video wall for Savannah Albert Ball Trivia. Brought to you by the San Antonio. Press News. Hail violation on a kicking team. Five yards penalty from the spot. First down. The player thought, because he ran around him, that the halo is not on the backside of the receiver. That's wrong. We'll take a break. Three to nothing. Iowa leads 104, remaining in the opening quarter. 
ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2001 Sylvania Alamo Bowl is brought to you by the totally redesigned Ford Explorer, only from Ford Outfitters, and by United Online, internet service for half the price of AOL. Call 1-877-ONLY-995. The Alamo, Central San Antonio. This is really a fun city as you look at Liddell Betts on the sideline, and this is uh, this is not good again. Uh, that hamstring we mentioned, but in case you uh, just joined us, he tweaked it and uh, did not start the ball game. He has played, but he continues to ride the bike and able to make sure that they don't have him come up with an injury that makes sure that he cannot play at all. You look at the McCann in the first drive, the numbers of what he did. Is it to the outside? 20, 25, out over the 30-yard line. Longest run from scrimmage. 16 yards, Kevin Curtis defensively. Concern Greg McMacken, the defensive coordinator for Texas Tech, had was first down. He felt like if Iowa own first down, it put his him, put his defense in such a hole. And uh, so far, Iowa has controlled the first down play. Grebbing with a good cutback. You see the offensive line collapse that defensive line of Texas Tech. By the way, the opening drive that took 9-15, the longest drive by Iowa opening drive this entire season. McCann sets in the pocket, gets this one out. It's Allen, and he's going to have another first down. Iowa now eating up huge chunks on first down. That's good for 15 yards. The reason that was open was because the tight end, Dallas Clark, they pinballed him. They doubled him going up the football field. You see Dallas Clark right here, number 44, being pinballed right here. So the back gets free. Jeremy Allen on the flat is the linebacker, Jonathan Hawkins, got picked up by and got picked by Dallas Clark. So a couple of uh, huge chunks of real estate coming out of the uh, Red Raider defense in its first down at the 45-yard line. Allen, the lone setback, and he gets it. Tries to turn the corner, spins around for a gain of a couple. For Acock, who has got, already had about five tackles in his opening quarter. And speaking of quarters, that is the end of the first quarter here from the Sylvania Animal Bowl, presented by Siemens. Three to nothing, the Hawkeyes on top. San Antonio, the former head coach of the Texas Tech Red Raiders, Spike Dykes, in attendance here. A lot of people want to know where he bought that sweater at. Well, it was suggested in the truck that possibly uh, it came out of the closet of Cliff Huxtable. Yeah. 1980s. 101 yards for Iowa, 10 minutes and 19 seconds of total time. Red Raiders, 47 yards, 414 in time of possession. That one thrown complete to Hill, had to go and very high. Three. And then paid for it just across midfield. It's going to be third down. Now let's take a look at the ESPN game track. McCann, opening drive, 57 total yards. Now he's 6'5", and he pays for it on this one. He really gets crunched by four players. Nice job here by David Bradley, the punter who's the holder. Kenny gets the field goal, but uh, if Bradley hadn't scooped that one up, wouldn't have gone that way. Texas Tech 13 plays, 47 yards, and no points on that drive. Again, Jeremy Allen, the only running back behind McCann. Senior out of Indianapolis, Indiana. McCann under pressure. Going to try to run it, and he'll be stopped. It's going to be fourth down Iowa. Josh Page saw to it that he did not pick up the first down. And now here comes the punt. And you talked about that off the top of the telecast. Now, Iowa is not good punting the football. But the field position right here, Ron, you wouldn't expect a punt block here because with only five yards to go for a first down, uh, I don't think they'll come after this one. Welker is the deep man for Texas Tech. The punt for the Buckeyes, number 28, David Bradley. Bradley. Low pass. And this one's not going to turn over. Welker on the run makes the catch at the 25 and picks up about three yards. Flag is down. A sap was there. It's a 25-yard kick at only three on the return. That's your halo call again. Five yards. Halo violation on the kicking team. Five yards from the spot. First down. 
Well, tonight at 9 o'clock Eastern, a special ABC Monday Night Football Holiday Bash. The Baltimore Ravens take on Keyshawn Johnson and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as both teams look to keep playoff hopes alive. Join the Monday Night Countdown crew at 7.30 to get you set for the special Saturday night edition of NFL Football. During this time of the year, I lose track of the days. You know, it's football every day. When's Monday? <laughs> you know what? I just know we got three games in six days, and we're all going to be not looking at the calendar for which day it is. Here's Williams. Nice job defensively as he gets wrapped up by Colin Cole, number 94, a junior out of Plantation, Florida. Ron, one thing when you look at those big splits, it's hard to run the football because you don't get combination blocks out of your offensive line. They can't help each other. Even though you spread people out, you don't get help in the blocking area. You don't get a rhythm in the running game. Kingsbury swings this one out in the flat. Francis going to have the first down out of the 45. That's a perfect example. If you're a young quarterback at home watching this football game, Cliff Kingsbury has his head on a swivel right here. He goes back and sets up. He looks to the side, right side, and then he comes back to Carlos Francis and picks up a first down. That was an alert play by the quarterback, Kingsbury. Six of 10, 36 yards in the early going. Throws this one looking for Francis again. Mike Leach thinks he's the best quarterback in the country. And uh, in this stage today, national TV, he has a chance to really uh, make a name for himself. A lot of the Texas Tech players, uh, it's hard to, uh, they, they don't see him play that much. And when you look at his numbers, 50 touchdown passes. Going to run it and gets out of bounds. Had his ankles taken out from under him by Meyer. And also Steen was out there. Good job again by Iowa's defense. A lot of zone coverage. And Ron, they looked at the Oklahoma tape. Oklahoma playing against Texas Tech. Mike Leach coached for Oklahoma. And they watched Oklahoma, how they defended Texas Tech. And how to Texas Tech defended Oklahoma. They played heavy zone. And so they learned that when you when you know a lot about those teams, you play zone. Well, they've got a third down. They need to take it to the Iowa 45-yard line. Pressure comes. This pass almost it is intercepted. The field. You need a gun. You better have an absolute cannon. You asked Norm Parker the other day about uh, Benny Sapp, and he said he's going to be a great corner. I think he feels like he's just made it. That's a great corner. Let's take a timeout. 12 minutes, 40 seconds remaining until halftime. Three to nothing, Iowa. ESPN Sunday Night Football. As a player, you just can't wait to get to this day. And you snap every catch all season long from the people who do it best. You came at him outside. Get your Sunday Night Football fix from Joe, Mike, and Paul. ESPN Sunday Night Football. Sundays at 8.30 only on ESPN. Brought to you in part by Rock and Box Chevrolet on Route 120 at Grace Lake. The nation's number one new and used car operation. How can VHEX.com help you decide on what vehicle to buy? With smart, thorough, unbiased, up-to-date research. And if you're trying to decide between a couple of different vehicles, at VHEX.com, you can compare them. Side by side, head to head, feature by feature, option by option, dollar for dollar. Try the side by side comparison at VHEX.com. It's your roadmap to the automotive world. It's a special Saturday edition of Monday Night Countdown. Join Mike, TJ, Sterling, and Mort as they catch up with all the NFL news and get you ready for the Ravens and the Bucks. Presented by UPS, 7.30 p.m. tonight on ESPN. The playoff crunch is here on ESPN. Aaron Brooks. Brooks goes to the end zone to Jackson. 
Ricky Williams look to stay alive for the postseason against Lamar Arrington and the Redskins. Redskins sings at 8.30 Sunday on ESPN. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2001 Sylvania Alamo Bowl is presented by Sylvania, the proud sponsor of the Alamo Bowl. Sylvania, brilliant light. And in part by Capital One, proud sponsor of the Capital One Florida Citrus Bowl on January 1st. One of the many barges that uh, float up and down the Riverwalk goes right through the central San Antonio. As you look at Sapp, his third career interception. Youngster, a sophomore out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. McCann on the sideline and Brad Banks, a junior out of Bell Glades, Florida, by way of Hines Community College, fumbles the snap and falls on it immediately. New quarterback. Rodney, like, I like this move. Now, a lot of people are probably sitting at home saying, Kyle McCann is so hot, why do you take him out? But you want you know, when you have a senior quarterback, sometimes you'd like to get your underclass guys in the heat of the battle, not just when the game's won or lost. And Brad Banks has played nine games this year. He's more athletic than quarterback, very active arm. Now, that snap should have taken place on the sideline. Eight to eight for Kyle McCann, so he's hot, red hot. I'll tell you what Banks did. McCann was off to a hot start against Northwestern, and Banks came in and threw an interception immediately. And then McCann came back in the ballgame. So now... He fumbles and then is sacked by Hunt. Yeah, go back to when he fumbled that snap. When you know you're going in as a quarterback, you get the center over on the sideline when the other offense is on the field. You take your snaps over there. Brad Banks, two plays now, one sack, one fumble. Third down, and they got to take it all the way across midfield. They need to go to the Red Raider 47-yard line. Three to nothing to Iowa. A lot of people coming into this one are having trouble figuring it out, who should be favored. But most people were in agreement. This was going to be a high-scoring game, and it's been anything yeah. but. Both long drives, but uh, came up with just a field goal. Three of five on third down conversions as Clark goes in motion. And they go straight ahead with the running play and grabbing with a big opening. He will take it to the 44-yard line, stopped finally by Kevin Curtis. Now, Ron, let's go to the punting team now. Because David Bradley is a three-step punter now. So Texas Tech will look at their uh, block point about nine yards deep from that football. First punt only 25 yards. So you suggested, would you go after him? I'd go after him every time. They've had, four, they've lost four games, not just by punting, but in special teams this year. Very high, wobbly spiral. Welker from the 15-yard line. Boy, there is no place to run. That is excellent coverage by Iowa. Tim Dodge, one of the wide receivers, is down to make the tackle. 41 on the kick, minus five on the return. So our score is Iowa 3, Texas Tech nothing. When we return more of Cliff Kingsbury, the nation's leader in pass completions by a large margin. A big game today puts his name firmly in the mix for next. All around the world, Siemens provides hospitals and doctors with the tools they need to make the right decisions right away. From diagnostics to patient information to care management, we're doing our part to help people everywhere feel better. I couldn't wait to show off my new wheels at the reunion until I told my State Farm agent I really needed it fixed fast and he mentioned Service First. When you choose State Farm Service First Claims Program, you don't have to get estimates. You go straight to a participating repair center where they guarantee their work. It's as simple as that. I was looking good again in no time. Ronnie? Service First. Just one more way. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there.
of Fame mask rider of the Texas Tech Red Raiders showing pistols, the hand sign that is uh, one of the symbols that you look for when you play the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. Back in the old Southwest Conference, uh, a rule was passed that you couldn't take live animals on the road. This is a bowl game, different situation. That conference no longer around. And see Texas Tech, first half they've owned this year. Well, they got poor field position here. Kingsbury will set deep in the pocket. Pulls it over the middle, got the man wide open, Francis. And that is the longest pass play as far as the distance that the pass covered of the afternoon. Good for 19 yards. Johnson was there defensively for the Hawkeyes. Talked about Iowa in zone coverage. In the interception, they went to a three-man front. They only rushed three men on this. And you can see the Iowa players drop in zone coverage. And Benny Sapp with a good break on the interception. So North Parker trying to change it up with three-man rush and a four-man rush. You know, let's don't put all the blame on Kingsbury because that receiver should have done a better job yes. of feeling the defensive back and possibly causing an interference call. But Kingsbury, very cool, drills this one incomplete. Francis was hit just as the ball got there. Johnson defensively. D.J. Johnson with good coverage. Cliff Kingsbury uh, has a lot of time, Ron. They, they don't have much of a running game. They average about 81 yards rushing. Here, Cliff Kingsbury, they get to him a little bit. Carlos Francis, the receiver. Uh, Campman, who was putting a lot of pressure on. D.J. Johnson may have hit him a little early there on that play. Very close. There's a three-man rush again by Iowa. Shovel pass, Ricky Williams tries to hide behind those huge offensive linemen. Pass to number two, Ricky Williams. Meyer comes over and makes sure that he does not break it out. Now the Red Raiders going to have a third down and, and a pretty good distance job here. They got to take it out to the 41. Third down and eight. Ricky Williams with the uh, tough time a year and a half ago, knee injury. Didn't know whether he was going to come back for his senior year. His dad convinced him that was the thing to do, and he said it's the best decision he's ever made. This pass, a little too short and not held on to by Mickey Peters. So, Mike, I just have to say, Kingsbury is not not sharp to open this ball game. No, yet. You, and you asked me the question whether you thought because he's playing it close to his home, with all the people being here, and I didn't think so because late in the year like this, nothing should bother you as a quarterback. But uh, he has not started off here sharp. Clinton Great House, second punt of the afternoon for the Red Raiders. Hill is the deep man, and he's dropped off to the 25. Excellent coverage kick. Very, very high. Hill calls for the fair catch, and he'll make it just inside the 25-yard line. Capital One Bowl Week continues today over on ESPN2 with the Insight.com Bowl at 5.30 Eastern Time. ESPN2, 5.30 from Phoenix, Arizona. Dwight Brady. K-State will know that gentleman before it's all over. And uh, Josh Scooby, the Kansas State Wildcats. Syracuse will know about him as well. Yeah, they'll know about Kansas State, too. <laughs> K-State, uh, they, they had some injuries and fell on some hard times, but they, they were in good position. They could have beaten Oklahoma yeah. in Norman this year. Very good ball play. Both, both good physical football teams. So McCann back at the helm, and it'll be play action. Good protection, and now it breaks down. He's going to try to run it and bumped out of bounds just shy of the 30-yard line by Saylor. I think Kyle McCann was trying to figure out where he was at on that field, whether he was behind the line of scrimmage and still could throw the football because he had a very open wide receiver down the football field. But uh, and Dallas Clark was the guy who was trying to get the ball to Iowa in time of possession. This game continues this way. It's going to go in at halftime with a considerable margin, and it has to frustrate Texas Tech. Really does because uh, they've done a nice job zone coverage-wise and breaking up and making plays on the wide receivers. Blitz up the middle, Allen, and he gets his feet taken out from under him by Hawkins. And Jonathan Hawkins, a very active linebacker, who got him for five tackles yeah, here already in the first half, and he's been all over the place. Just made a shoestring tackle. 
So they take Mike Smith, one of the linebackers out. Paul McClendon will come in as the extra defensive back. And we haven't seen much of Liddell Betts, so Adrian's report uh, a concern for Iowa. Allen behind McCann. Third down. They need the 35-yard line. Short drop right over the middle. Zings it. I mean perfect to Hill. That'll be enough for the first down and quiet the Texas Tech faithful. Nine yards in the pass play. Adrian Karsten, let's check with you again. Ron, it's ironic. The more Iowa holds on to the ball, it actually could be a bit of downfall. They open that first drive only just short of 10 minutes. Longest opening drive of the year. It's warm in here. These guys are used to playing their best football in cold, windy weather. About 70 degrees outside, nearly 70 degrees inside. The longer they hold on to the ball, the more fatigue that offensive line experiences. It may show up late third for our quarter early fourth. Okay, what I mean, uh, speaking of warm, McCann, still perfect. Nine of nine for 71 yards. Tries to avoid being sacked. Can I get my Hawkins? Again, on the quarterback here. Hawkins has really had a good first half here. As Mike mentioned, very active, and he's been everywhere he needs to be. And going back to what Adrian said, I'd, I'd rather have my team on the field than <laughs> Kingsbury <laughs> because uh, the Texas Tech's going to get untracked here before long, so you just want to keep the ball away from as much as possible. But what I was doing, everything's falling on Kyle McCann's back right now because Liddell Betts not in the, in the game. Oliver in motion. And grabbing huge opening. Has five, has ten. Cut off at 13 yards. McClendon, the nickelback, made the tackle. And they're going to say officially 14 yards in the carry. That was a good job by the offensive line. David Porter, Alonzo Cunningham, and Bruce Nelson on that side. You see the hole blocked. Just a nice job of kicking out. Plugins, the uh, linebacker. Iowa's got everything going now. They're, they're hot throwing the football. They're running the ball well. Their quarterback is perfect. Grevin has 51 yards on eight attempts, and their best back is over on the sideline with the problems with a the hamstring. They throw this one back. Jeremy Allen, he will go inside the 40. Well, we talked about a roller coaster for the quarterback. He's on a high right now. It's like you go to those amusement parks, Cedar Point back in Ohio, and you get to the top of the mountain, and then before you go down the roller coaster. But uh, in a game against Michigan this year, he, uh, he was booed by the fans uh, at home. He didn't mope. He didn't lash out. He didn't quit. He just hung in there, and, he, and Kyle McCann is showing me something here in this football game. 10 of 10, 79 yards for him. Dallas Clark, the tight end. They pitch it back, though, and it's Grevin. Grevin has the first down inside the 30s, down to the 28-yard line. And I'll tell you, they have got Texas Tech just weaving, man. I mean, they are, they've got them totally off balance. Well, sometimes you can miss the point on the, on the time of possession because even though the offense has been out there a long time, you've been taking punches as a defensive guy. You're standing there, you're taking hits. Look at Watch Porter. number 73, yeah, and David Porter. Porter. And when those guys... 300 pounders lean on you uh, for about 25 plays. I mean, you get wore out. <laughs> Porter, 6'7", 315 pounds. A senior out of Belleville, Illinois. On first down, Griffin goes to the left side. Huge opening inside the 20. And he's down to around the 17. Curtis from the secondary making the tackle. And I'll tell you, Mike Leach is going to look at the numbers at halftime and say, hey, fellas, way too many tackles for our safeties. Our secondary is having to yeah. save the day. Another big hole you see on this side. You could draw a truck through there. Stein Aaron with a good run. Ron, this is going to set up the play-action pass, though, because all of a sudden you're talking about Curtis and the safeties making plays. They're going to throw the ball behind them here real soon. Well, Grevin's career high is 77. He's got 73 right now. And with this run very close to equaling his career high as Hawkins puts the stopper on him. 
and we'll see if the Hawks do just what Mike was talking about. That is, put it in the belly of Grevin and then take it back out and throw for the end zone. Yeah, when you're knocking the ball off the uh, line off the uh, line of scrimmage like Iowa is, your play action pass, everything's available for Ken O'Keefe, the offensive coordinator. So Iowa football team trying to gain a winning season. Tenth play of the drive. Six and five coming in. Well, they run it back into the boundary. Grabbing inside the 10. Not going to have the first down, but he now has a new career high in rushing for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Smith and Curtis combining on the stop. Here's the one thing you don't want to happen to you if you're Iowa. You don't want to have to settle for another field goal because uh, Texas Tech they're not going to be blank this entire football game, I don't believe, because they're going to they're going to make some things happen on offense. You got to cash in with touchdowns. Third down, and they need the seven-yard line to pick up the first. I like this back coming in here, Fred Russell, Fred, number two. Number two, Freddie Russell. Talk to the Iowa coaches. They say he can scoop. Well, they fake it to him, looking for the end zone, zings it and. That's a catch. It's a top base. It's it goes the offense. It is a catch. First and goal in Iowa. Jensen, Eric Jensen, took it away from the defensive back. And as Mike said, he shared it for a moment. That was a picture-perfect throw by Kyle McCann. He drills that ball in there. Kevin Curtis is good. Is in good coverage. Eric Jensen, a 6'3", 259-pound senior, pulls it away. So they got a tie, and the tie goes to the offense. Twelfth play of the drive. McCann sizzling. Oliver in motion. And on first and goal, at Grimming, at right side, touchdown, Iowa. Touchdown, Iowa, number 34, Grimming. Really good block by Jeremy Allen, the senior out of Indianapolis. And the Hawkeyes have owned this first half. That drive was bloody in the nose of Texas Tech's defense. Now, they just ran that football. Adam and Kyle McCann with a couple good mix in the offense for the Hawkeyes Kading to attempt the extra point knocks it home and with three minutes 19 seconds left until halftime the Iowa Hawkeyes scored their first touchdown and they have dominated it as far as time of possession and controlling this football game 10 to nothing to Iowa we'll be right back vacation kit and join us on the river. show just do it i'm going to make a collect call 1-800 collect presents ava save a lot culture careful how you dial boys ava we always use 1-800 collect then you already know it saves at least a buck or two of course it's so easy thought you had a call to make talk about saving some dough 1-800 collect save a buck or two Monday, Brandon Doman and BYU stare down Louisville. BYU Louisville, the Axa Liberty Bowl, 4 o'clock Monday on ESPN. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2001 Sylvania Alamo Bowl is presented by Sylvania, the proud sponsor of the Alamo Bowl. 
Pennsylvania. Brilliant life. And in part by Dodge. Get somewhere. Grab life by the horns. Dodge. Welcome back to San Antonio. Texas Tech uh, has been stunned in this ball game so far because of that young man right there, Kyle McCann, a senior out of Creston, Iowa. Look at those numbers, 11 out of 11, 87 yards. And the last pass that he threw to pick up a huge third down and give them first and goal, there was just no place else to throw it. He threaded the needle and put it between two defenders. As you look at McCann for Texas Tech, the deep return man. to kick it off. Six yards deep, he's going to return it. Not going to make the 15-yard line again also. No flags are down, so we will take a timeout. 3-10 remaining until halftime. Iowa shutting out the Red Raiders of Texas Tech right now. Beautiful day in San Antonio. Spin, spin, spin the globe. It's your turn to spin the globe. Spin it, spin it, spin it. All around the world, Siemens helps companies prosper by providing them with systems and controls that assure quality, regardless of quantity. Whatever the product, wherever consumers consume, we want to help them save our life better. Children with Down syndrome are a gift of life. The buddy walk was just an unbelievable experience. There was just celebration all over, all around us. As a mom, it just really touched my heart. I tell everybody about how good Walmart has been to us. Their people came out and walked. They provided lunch. At Walmart, we have become partners. They love our kids. That's what we all want, is our children to be accepted for who and what they are. I was very proud of, of our walk. People cared about our kids. A Beautiful Mind, nominated for six Golden Globes, including Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Actor. Gentlemen, the great John Nash. His genius was pushed to the edge. Tell me what happened. He has lost his grip on reality. But in the fight of his life, I can do this. He would achieve the impossible. Ebert and Roper give A Beautiful Mind two thumbs up. One of the very best movies of the year. A Beautiful Mind, rated PG-13. Now playing in select theaters, opens Friday everywhere. Well, the Hawkeye cheerleaders are whooping it up, and they got a lot of reason to. Their football team has been really dominant in this uh, opening half of play. Had the ball over 10 minutes in the opening quarter, and they've had it far more than Texas Tech in the second quarter. Let's see if Kingsbury and company can get things going. They are a quick strike offense, but so far the zone of Iowa has thwarted them. Ricky Williams, and they try to keep it on the ground with the running play. And this is the guy that they have done a good job of bottling. Now, Steen is out there to make the tackle. Ron, when you look at uh, Texas Tech, they've got to get some kind of balance in their offense. Now, they tried to run there with Ricky Williams, but only five people in the box right here. When you count five people, so five defensive players, so you got to be able to run the football a little bit more against that. Up inside, trapping, and uh, just some zone plays. Short pass right here to the 20 to Welker. And Texas Tech is going to be confronted with a third down at about four yards. The other thing you got to do against zone cover, you got to be patient. You're not going to get the home run because they're playing, they're playing back three deep, two deep zone. But you've got to be able to play pitch and catch and then break a play. Norm Parker's telling his defense, tackle them when they catch the football. Three-man rush this time on the third down play. Swing it out to Williams, and you see the help coming over immediately. And from the spot that they got, he's not going to have the first down. Barr was the first man to get out there and make contact. Also, Benny Sapp, who has an interception in the first half here. See, again, that's picture perfect how to play the catch out of the backfield. Just come up and make the tackle, and don't let a three-yard pass play become a ten-yard 
I don't think he made it again. No, from the look of the yellow line, he's got to be about a half yard short. But I said that the last time, and he made it. <laughs> he looked at the wrong monitor. No, I saw the same yellow line oh. everybody in America sees. Texas Tech trying to think about whether they want to go for this. They're going to go for it on the fourth down. They think things have, have gone Iowa's way. They're going to try to change the flow of this game. Now, this could be the play of the game because if Iowa shuts them down here, right here, this becomes a uh, bad decision. This one where the fans say go, and uh, they're not with you if you don't make it after. Red Raider fans coming to their feet. Trying to draw them off sides. Now they'll punch the football. Texas Tech calls a timeout. 135 remaining until halftime. They trail it 10 to nothing. <laughs> Menards is ringing out the old year by cutting prices on everything in the store. Hurry in before December 31st and save 10% on everything, even sale priced items, when you use your Menard big card. Put in a new kitchen, bath, carpet, or energy saving doors and windows and take an extra 10% off. Hurry ends December 31st. Save 10% when you use your Menard big card. Save big money at Menards. You're in control with in demand pay per view from ATG Broadband. This week on Sunday NFL Countdown, the playoff crunch is on, and special guest coach Bill Parcells is back to help break it all down. Cordell Stewart, the Steelers QB, has emerged as a leader who could take his team to the Super Bowl. Cordell really impressed me. Plus, the 49ers Garrison Hurst and his amazing comeback story. This 49er team is better than they were because Garrison Hurst is better. Get all your NFL news and pregame analysis first with Sunday NFL Countdown, beginning 11 a.m. Sunday on ESPN. Welcome back to San Antonio. The Sylvania Animal Bowl presented by Siemens, 10 to nothing, Iowa. And uh, Coach Leach and his staff got some work to do at halftime as far as sorting uh, some adjustments out. Great house to punt. It'll be the third punt of the afternoon by the Red Raiders. Very high and is going to go out of bounds see where they step this one the official running all the way up across the 45 is going to see the 47 yard line so Iowa's got 128 showing on the clock Reese Davis let's uh, check with you all right Ron coming up on the Dodge halftime report we'll check in on a little Motor City Magic Toledo trying to get a little rocket launcher going we'll also give you some insight on the insight.com Mark and Rob will talk about the best way to handle Syracuse star Dwight Freeney for Kansas State and also Georgia Tech has itself a new football coach Matt McWhorter is going to finish 1-0 as a head coach see you at halftime guys all righty best way to get rid of uh, Freeney is give him show <laughs> Draw play to Allen. Boy, he takes that inside the 45, and that's going to be enough for a first down. That's a gain of 11 yards on the first down play. The Texas Tech better be very careful right here. They don't want to go into halftime trailing 17 to nothing. No, Iowa's offensive line owns uh, the defensive line of Texas Tech. They may be wore down a little bit here in the first half. Quick pass to the sideline. He's still perfect. Dodge makes the catch. Steps out of bounds. Now they say officially at the 33. And if you've just joined us, folks, this kid is perfect on the first half. He does not have one incomplete pass. 12 of 12. So just what Mike talked about off the top of the telecast. It has been a roller coaster ride for him, but when he's hot, oh. he's hot. He's sizzling right now. Isn't there a movie like that? Or a movie title? <laughs> but it's not about a quarterback, Mike. Right? Second down and short. Tech 
showing blitz off the corner. They come with it. Run goes the other direction by Allen and breaks a tackle, breaks another. Inside the 15-yard line, Curtis finally made the stop. There's still 62 seconds left until halftime, and it's a gain of 20 yards on the run from scrimmage. On the right side, David Porter and Alonzo Cunningham, the 73 and 74, they just own this side of the field. And there's nobody run support-wise to make the tackle on Jeremy Allen. Here it is again. You can see how the, uh, when the, once those defensive uh, players see those off, big offensive linemen coming around that corner. Nothing well, look there. at total yards, 221 to 92. Allen runs back into the boundary. That'll stop the clock with 46 seconds left. Mike Smith bumped him out. And, Ron, there's not many better defensive coordinators in the country than Greg McMacken. Uh, I talked to Mark Mangino, who's just now been named the head coach of Kansas, and he said, uh, not, with, not including Oklahoma, he thinks Greg McMacken's the best defensive coordinator, coordinator in the Big 12. This guy's been with the Seahawks, Miami, Hawaii, and they win every place they've been. Also is one of the highest paid coordinators in college football. Second down and nine. McCann, well his arm was hit as the ball was thrown by Hunt, and there's his first incompletion. And it's also the first time, really, they've gotten some good heat on him. Well, Aaron Hunt, 12 sacks. 25 for his career and he comes off the corner they missed blocked at the offensive back Jeremy Allen tried to block block him in his ankles watch number 47 he misses him and that's the reason the pass was incomplete third down they need the three and a half yard line for the first down the third sack of the first half by Texas Tech. Uh, Aaron Hunt shows you why he's third in the country in sacks, but a wise decision by Kyle McCann not to throw the football, Ron, and take away the opportunity for the field goal attempt if you get it intercepted. While we have a moment, let's go down to the Riverwalk and get a word from one of our hosts today, Mr. Fran Piscatella of Sylvania. Thanks, Ron. On behalf of the more than 12,000 associates of Sylvania in North America, it is our pleasure as a title sponsor of the Sylvania Alamo Bowl to bring you today's game between the University of Iowa of the Big Ten and Texas Tech University of the Big 12. This year we are joined by our parent company, Siemens, in hosting today's game. One of the benefits of today's game is the fact that the majority of the proceeds go to the Education Scholarship Foundation of each university and conference participating here today. At this special time of the year, the Associates at Sylvania and Siemens and our nationwide network of distributors and retailers would like to extend our deepest sympathies to the families of the victims of the September 11th tragedy plus express our warmest appreciation to all of the rescue workers involved and a wish of safe return to all our armed forces personnel. Thank you for joining us today and please enjoy the rest of the Sylvania Alamo Bowl game. Well, we have 36 seconds left until halftime. Kading's longest field goal is 47 yards. His career long actually is 49, and this one's going to be placed down at the 28. 38-yard attempt for the bar has mark. David Bradley, the punter, is the holder. Wide left. Folks, that's one of the very few things that has gone wrong for Iowa in this first half. A roar coming up from the Texas Tech fans. We talked about Mike Leach at halftime. He's going to have to have a talk with his quarterback and, and the receivers and just talk about being patient and take what 
Iowa gives you a little short throw and turn it into big games. Texas Tech with 33 seconds left and again those super super wide splits for the offensive line. Kingsbury this thrown on that one Welker the intended receiver. Ten and 19 62 yards this is a team that dominated their opponents in the first half have not been able to do it today. Ricky Williams has just has been virtually shut out. This pass is caught by Peters and he gets out of bounds just across the 30. Bob Sanders had a shot at it. The defensive back 58194 just came up a little short. Tech now with 23 seconds on the game clock. Trailing by 10. Would love nothing more than to have some momentum of getting it in field goal range and they get the big opener. There is Glover, Nehemiah Glover. Down the sideline, bucked out of bounds at the 32 and a half. Five yards, Mike. It took two quarters, almost two quarters, up to 13 seconds, but that was the big play Tech is known for. Nehemiah Glover caught this football against zone coverage and then broke it to the outside. Now look at the yardage he picks up after the catch, almost 20 yards. You can see his quickness, and the angle of pursuit better be precise on a guy like that, or he's gone by you. Of time. Now pressure on Kingsbury. Throws this one for the end zone and out of bounds. Three seconds left until halftime. Hail Mary? Yeah, you gotta, you gotta try to put one up. Of course, field goal wise, you're in inside, you got everything going for you. It'd be about a 50 yard attempt. And Treese, the longest for him is 42 yards. I think you take a shot at the field goal here. Texas Tech is going to call a timeout. Just want something good. You want to end this half on something, a good note. And you, you don't have to worry about wind or anything inside the dome. Uh, tomorrow it's ESPN Sunday Night Football, the battle of uh, big backs. As Stephen Davis and the Washington Redskins look to match rushing yards with Ricky Williams of the Saints. New Orleans still alive for a playoff berth tomorrow night, 8.30 Eastern, immediately following NFL primetime. Ron Franklin, Mike Godfrey, to Adrian Karsten, coming to you from the Alamo City, San Antonio. they're going to do Texas Tech's going to run their uh, field goal team on the field. Well this is great house coming out. He's the, the putter and maybe the distance field goal kicker also. He's got the best way. This will be the second longest in Alamo Bowl history if it is good. A 50 yard attempt. Clinton great house. Tell you what, he's got the distance. He's good. So Iowa in a position to really put Texas Tech way behind the eight ball. They looked as though they were going to score, make it a 17 to nothing game. They missed the field goal, and they go in at halftime, leading by only seven. So momentum in this ball game definitely has to be going back to the guys in Lubbock. Adrian Karsten, let's go to you. Coach, do you feel like the momentum is coming back to your side of the field now? I don't know. We're not playing worth a damn, and we need to play better than we are right now. Ron? Well, a very succinctly <laughs> put. Adrian, I don't think yeah. we can add much to that, do you? <laughs> well, that's... That's quick work, Adrian. 
So we are at halftime with our score, Iowa 10 and Texas Tech 3. Let's go back to the studio. Guys, we want to see you add to that comment. <laughs> Well, Ron, some artists work in oil and clay, and some work in obscenities. And I think some might be hovering over the river walk in San Antonio after the halftime speech. Iowa 10-3 on Texas. There are only so many hours in the day, for sure. Guy who left Georgia Tech and was brilliant at Maryland, taking over Ralph Region. Out the old year with the triple header on Capital One Bowl Week. Monday, we'll start with the crucial dichotomy humanitarian bowl. Woody Dantzler and his farewell performance for Clemson against La Tech. Acts of Liberty Bowl, BYU and Louisville. Luke Staley will not be able to go for the Cougars in that one. North Carolina and Auburn in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. That will cap off the triple header. 7.30 Eastern time, as mentioned. Caddy will not be running for the Tigers. Clinton Greathouse, it wasn't a work of art from a beauty standpoint, but it looked pretty good on the scoreboard. 50 yards out, it got the Ravens on the board. It's 10 to 3 at the half. This month, AT&T Broadband delivers the movies you want on in-demand pay-per-view. Dr. Doolittle 2. Oh! The Grinch. Swordfish. Spy Kids. All this month on in-demand pay-per-view from AT&T Broadband. Uh-oh, should have gotten a Duracore door from Menards. Duracore doors by Mastercraft are foam reinforced to resist dents and delamination. Plus, they deaden noise. On sale in several widths, $54.99. Give your floors an elegant look with classic lock laminate flooring. No need for messy glue. It just snaps into place. On sale, $2.49 a square foot. Plus, take 10% off everything, even sale prices, when you use your Menard big car. Save big money at Menard's. There is a start, there is a finish, and in the journey between, there are dreams. The NCAA Hall of Champions keeps these dreams alive for you. More than a museum, the NCAA Hall of Champions takes you on an interactive journey. Relive some of the most inspirational moments in collegiate sports history and walk in the steps of the student-athlete. At the NCAA Hall of Champions, you'll find something for every fan. Discover what it means to be a champion. The journey begins inside. Welcome back to San Antonio. Iowa leads it 10 to 3. And as we take a look at the ESPN game track, this is what occurred in that first 30 minutes of play and the reason the Hawkeyes are leading as they come out of the locker room. McCann, simply fantastic. Right at the very end of the first half, he finally missed a pass. 12 of 13, 97 yards. Gritty. Boy, new career high for him, 82 yards. But then, just before halftime, mishandled snap. Iowa, for some reason, did not rush at a 50-yard field goal. So we'll wait and see if maybe that is a momentum swinger. Or what do you think went on at halftime? I have a feeling it was pretty loud in the Red Raider locker room, Mike. Well, if I'm Texas Tech, uh, Mike Leach, I go in the locker room and say, hey, they had the ball for over 20 minutes. Their quarterback was 12 of 13. We had the ball 9 minutes and 18 seconds. We had the only turnover in the first half and we're only buying 10 to 3 so it's our game to win so I think Texas Tech's in pretty good shape right here as you take a look at the first half stats a uh, little bit of a of a walkabout a slumbering by Texas Tech 138 yards they did show as they moved down the field quickly how quickly they can get it done yeah Ron and you you look at this 30 yards rushing they're not a big rushing team but you got to rush for more than 30 yards to keep the defense honest at least get them out of that three-man rush just a few moments ago Adrian Carson had an opportunity to talk to Kirk Ferentz. Coach Ferentz and the Hawkeyes are about 30 minutes away from your first bowl victory in five years. What did you tell your team at halftime? Uh, you know, I think we played a uh, real fine first half. Uh, we got them to play the style we wanted to play, but there's a lot of football left. They're an excellent team, an explosive team. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of work to do still. How do you keep it rolling in the second half now offensively? It seems like those big old 300 pounders are making a difference. Well, you know, we made a couple mistakes that hurt us, and we could be up by a little bit more. So we just have to keep our focus, concentration, and we've got to play on defense each and every snap. Good luck in the second half, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. Right? So Kirk understands that with this uh, potent Texas Tech offense, can't go to sleep. McCann, the return man for Texas Tech, hitting to kick it off. And McCann on the far sideline, 
sustained loose 25 minute halftime in many of these bowl games and the kids come back out and they try to stretch out those muscles and make sure they don't hurt themselves at the beginning of the third quarter there's a good example you know you kick the ball out of bounds you've been sitting inside for uh, 25 minutes and you're not ready to go at the start of the half so the high kickoffs and in fact I'll tell you something, he reminds me of a straight-on kicker with the elevation that he gets on the ball. And they have been stopping Texas Tech on every kickoff short of the 15-yard line. Well, now Tech is going to start off at their own 35-yard yeah, line. And that's a couple first downs from what they've been having to do. Ricky Williams today, 15 yards. Credit the defense of Iowa for really getting after him. And Betts on the sideline trying to get that hamstring to loosen up. The left hamstring is the one that's giving him trouble. Middle screen. Francis. And, and Mike, just seeing that play right there, Iowa extremely well schooled on defense. Yeah, defensive lineman Derek Pickens, number 92, he started to rush and then he played off on the screen. Norm Parker's making all the right calls so far, but he, he knows, and Kirk Ferentz knows, they're one or two plays away from tying this football game up because they're so potent. Second down, got him open, near sideline, Glover. Glover is the man that broke open the, the big play to put him in a position to get the field goal. That's good for 16 yards. That's what you have to do against zone coverage. A three-man rush, you gotta just be patient, get Nehemiah Glover right behind the corner in front of Benny Sapp. Breaks off the corner route, well-thrown ball by Cliff Kingsbury. Defensive numbers, Glover, by the way, four catches, 57 yards. Meyer <clears throat> led the Hawkeyes with four and a half tackles, four solo, Barr had two and a half, Sanders had two and a half in the first half. As Ricky Williams will Ricky go for short yardage down to the 47, Pickens again. Even though that play only picked up two yards, it's a good play call by Mike Leach because it'll slow the defensive lineman down, make them respect the running game. Here's a no huddle, but now here's a play where you spread everybody out. Now Iowa's trying to figure out how to play this. Maybe a quarterback draw. It's, Tech taking a long time to get it off. Iowa still bouncing around saying, what do we do? And they'd get it out to Welker. Welker is going to be hit immediately and knocked down by Barr. Barr got him behind the blockers. Yeah, that's a Steve Spurrier play. And what uh, Mike Leach is trying to do right now is find something to hang his hat on right now. They're not huddling. They're going to some trick formations here. They spread everybody out. I thought they really should have ran the quarterback draw right here. There's nobody here. I'd come back to that and run the quarterback. Third down. They need to take it to the 39-yard line of Iowa. Kingsbury got him over the middle. It's going to be enough for the first down. Glover again. And Glover has become the go-to guy as he has found the seams of the zone. But when you find the seams of the zone, you sit down, and that's what Nehemiah Glover did. He sat down running right in the middle of the two linebackers. Came into this game with 32 catches. You're going to see number 88 just sit down right there in the middle. Tech fans coming alive as they are hoping that their football team is going to come alive. They, they uh, as I mentioned, slumbered a little bit in the first half, but they are very, very capable. The numbers throughout the season prove that. Kingsbury going to step up into the pocket, gets by the first attempted sacker, and Barr will finally stop him. Campman is the man that uh, put the big pressure on him and had a big hand on him but couldn't bring him down. Yeah, Aaron Campman really had the first shot at him. The fine defensive end split so wide working against Daniel Loper, a red redshirt freshman. Mike, if you put a clock on that, though, Kingsbury is getting forever in the Oh, pocket. he has. And that's the style that Norm Parker and uh, Iowa's defensive coaches have decided on. Defend. Here comes the blitz off the corner. Quick look in Glover. Glover is going to be stopped just shy of the 20-yard line, but that's
the move the sticks gain of 12. all of a sudden it's become the nehemiah glover show uh he's the receiver they're starting to find open against benny sap benny became a starter midway through his freshman season and as mike documented well in the first half the coaches think he's going to be awfully good but he's still very young only yep. a sophomore and uh, he makes mistakes from time to time Right now, Texas Tech trying to put it in the end zone and tie this one up. Pressure off the corners again. Going deep over the middle. Wide open. Touchdown, Walker. How did they get him that confused, Mike? It's the first blitz. I, I, I believe it's the second blitz I've seen this afternoon by Iowa, and they just a bust in coverage on West Bowl. to attempt the extra point and try to tie this one up at 10. And he does. We'll go to break. Iowa 10, Texas Tech 10 with 11 minutes, 36 seconds left in the third quarter. The Red Raiders came out of the locker room and appeared to leave Sylvania Alamo Bowl presented by Seaman. You look at Welker who caught the 20-yard touchdown pass at the drive, eight plays, 65 yards, and they poke it into the end zone to bring this one even. Link to the drive, three minutes, 24 seconds. And Kingsbury, look at those numbers, six of six, 61 yards. Mike off the top, Iowa drove nine minutes and 15 seconds off the game clock. Tech had to sit over there and wait. Here they come right out of the locker room and they're ready to go. Good point, because you're ready to go when the game starts and you get that long drive that takes a lot out of you. This is Hill. Very dangerous return man. Collides with his own person and comes out across the 25. Going to be 23 on a return, and it's McCann who makes the stop. On that touchdown play, Iowa's got a zone blitz, and the, the defensive lineman right here, Joseph Uselman, is against Wes Welker, and it's a mismatch, and you can see the result. Six points. Cliff Kingsbury sought it out, found it right away, and uh, went right to Welker. Now, Ron, Iowa has to answer with the hard-nosed football they played in the first half. Sailor. He had eight and a half tackles in the first half. Give him nine and a half on the night. Yeah, he's saying, hey, stop him up or at least slow him down up front. But when you watch Iowa, they're really favoring the right side of their offensive line. David Porter and Alonzo Cunningham. They own their side against Lamont Anderson and Rodney McKinney. On the right side, they run the ball very successfully. I'll tell you who else is in there is Lightfoot, number 70, replacing Cunningham at that right guard spot, and he has done well. Pitch it back to Grevin to go the other direction. Puts a head down. Tough running across the 35. It's enough for the first down. Adrian Karsten, let's check with you. In the Texas Tech locker room, after we heard from Mike Leach very succinctly before he went in, there was a lot of standing around, Ron and Mike. No one, players, coaches, knew what to say or who to say it until Greg McMack, the defense coordinator, who is not a man who has a reputation for being boisterous in the locker room, took over and said, we are playing street ball to all of you guys, to the offense and the defense. The greatest thing can happen in this game we come out and score on offense. We put the challenge out there in the minute. Boy, they did. Aycock has six tackles in the first half. Hawkins had five and a half. Quick pass thrown to Hill. Gets by the first, will not get by the second. Here's Kevin Curtis. Number three, Hill. Hill. Kevin Curtis, the defensive back, talked about uh, the Big 12 coaches think he's the second best defensive player in that league behind Roy Williams of Oklahoma. Big physical playmaker. Greg McMacken compares him to former Miami football player Benny Blades. 102 tackles. Very Six, active safety. 6'3, 217. Grabbing the lone setback. Seven yards behind the center. Nelson gets it right up the middle. Got a half five. 
five yards, six and seven, close to the first down, out to the 48. And Curtis again coming up from that safety spot to make the tackle for the Red Raiders. But if Iowa can continue to do this, they can take the wind out of the sails of the Red Raiders because all of a sudden you could see the crowd kind of sitting back on their hands a little bit saying, yeah, okay, this is what happened in the first half. And it does frustrate you. You know, keep your offense on the sideline. And when you have a potent offensive football team, you, your, your crowd really favors that side of the ball. Tech needs a big play defensively. Third down and short. Grebbing. They've got penetration, but they're not going to be able to stop him. You'll have the first down on the left side. Cougins making the tackle for Texas Tech. Grebbing only had 35 rushing attempts for 218 yards during the regular season, averaging 6.2 yards per carry. In the first half, he had 13 carries for 82 yards. Well, now he's up to 17, over 100 yards, 6.2 average. So he has been an answer for Iowa, replacing Liddell Betts. Fred Russell, number two, comes into the lineup. Not very big. 5'8", 185 sophomore out of Inkster, Michigan. They put him in the slot. Pump's going to go on top, and he's looking for Hill. And that one well overthrown and out of bounds. Hanson played dead well, Ron. He didn't bite on the pump fake to Khalil Hill and sat right back there. And uh, Kyle McCann had no other... Resolved then to throw it out of bounds. So McCann, 12 of 13 in the first half, opens the second half, 0 of 1, 13 of 15, 100 yards now on the afternoon. Well, I'll tell you what, David Porter's been impressive to me as a right tackle. That big 6, 7, 315 pounder. Run right behind him. You got to play. Drop play. Trying to take advantage of big David Porter. And they're going to spot him just short of the 46. Flugens on the tackle. It's going to be third down and a little bit longer than what they've had. Yeah, Passer, what do you what do you do? Well, yeah, I think you get in a situation where you got to throw the football here. In the first half on the offensive line, he really owned the line of scrimmage. You see these holes. You know, Adrian Carson could run through them. I tell you, Jeremy Allen is shaken up. Betts already out of the ball game with a strain of the left hamstring. And now Jeremy Allen, the starting fullback, being helped off the field. Iowa becoming very thin at running back. Robbie Crockett, a senior out of Battle Creek, Michigan, checks into the game. Number 15. So here's the situation. Third down. They need to take it to the Red Raider 39-yard line or give up the football. Dodge has been a good receiver for Iowa. Runs up into the pocket, is hit as he throws, and the crowd goes nuts for the defense. They came up with the big stop. Hawkins was the man with the pressure. And the Greg McMacken has settled into a game plan here that has put a little bit more pressure on Kyle McCann. He's not going to sit back and let him go 12 out of 13. And one of the things the book on McCann is does not like the blitz, no. does not like the pressure. Uh, he doesn't like people in his face. They're going to go after this punt. Bradley waits for the snap. Mike mentioned he is a three-step punter. Here they come. Gets it away nicely. Wobbly spiral. Walker at the 10. And Walker's going to take that thing for return of 12 yards. 36 on the kick. So we'll take a timeout as Cliff Kingsbury prepares to come back out on the field. 7.32 left in the third quarter. We're tied at 10. vacation kit and join us on the river pizza. in my family if one wants pizza the other wants chinese pizza. even their stomachs don't agree if one gets indigestion the other one gets heartburn if one gets nausea the other one gets well so i get pepto-bismol 
As it coats, it relieves heartburn, indigestion, upset stomachs, nausea, and diarrhea. It'd take a box full of other medicines to do what Pepto-Bismol does. Agree? Agree. Agree. Pepto-Bismol, first aid for heartburn, diarrhea, nausea, indigestion, and upset stomachs. It's beautiful. Yeah. Thanks for all your help. Good job. Now. Yes. Yes, we can. We know how you feel. And that's why we're here. In Circuit City. We're with you. Sweetie. Yeah, just put that anywhere. Monday, Brandon Doman and BYU stare down Louisville. BYU Louisville, the Axe of Liberty Bowl. Four o'clock Monday on ESPN. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2001 Sylvania Alamo Bowl is brought to you by Red Zone from Old Spice. Intense protection for intense people. And by New Edge Clean Shaving Gel. It helps lift dirt and oil every time you shave. San Antonio, Texas, the Alamo Dome, filled to capacity, just over 65,000. And reportedly, Texas Tech has over 35,000 of those tickets. You can see a lot of red. But the faithful from Hawkeye land down here, and they're making a lot of noise as well. Fun ball game. Kingsbury. Intercepted. 92 pickings, and he is going to take it down inside the 15-yard line to the 11. How did that happen, Mike? When you have a three-man rush, and you're not really trying to pressure the quarterback, your hands up as a defensive lineman. He threw that ball right to Derek Pickens. Derek Pickens ranks fifth in the Big Ten in quarterback sacks. See if he had his hands up right there. He's almost like he was the intended receiver. The difficult thing with a guy like Ricky Williams, he's only 5'8", and he had to have a downward trajectory on the ball, which as Mike said, he threw it right into Pickens' bread basket. So let's see if the Hawkeyes can turn this one into gold. Boy, with this switch momentum again. Dallas Clark in motion. They pitch it back to Grebbing. They get penetration. Hawkins is going to duck him down for a loss. So much success running to the right side, and then you go to the left side, and Hawkins runs through behind the pulling guard and makes this play. A toss sweep, Hawkins running right through, untouched, and makes the tackle on Grebbing. Grebbing couldn't make the turn or couldn't make the cut anyway. His no. shoe came off before he was tackled. Second down and 14. can puts it in the stomach of Grebbing off the left side gets by one tackler gonna go inside the 10 he's down to around the nine Sailor now with 11 and a half tackles in the ball game is the man who grabs it yeah, Ricky Sailor has been busy in the secondary and the second leading tackler in the first half was Ryan Acock the safety so uh, two defensive yeah. backs leading your tackle we talked about, <laughs> about how many tackles the guys in the secondary were making Acock had six in the first half four of those solo Ron here's the kind of play where you look for Dallas Clark in Texas Tech Greg McMacken knows they're going to try to find number 44 right here top of the screen is Hill dodge at the bottom running play penetration knocked down for nothing Anderson going to be a loss of a couple on the play Texas Tech with two huge defensive plays. Now, all of a sudden, the defenders coming up with something big. Yeah, you talk about a big series here to force this field goal attempt. A little surprised that they ran this ball on fourth down situation, but uh, trying to catch Texas Tech in a pass rush, Lamont Anderson would have nothing of it. 31 yards on the field goal attempt from straight away. No angle on this one. the tie. That's a win for Texas Tech right there. Katie knocks home the field goal. Five minutes, 12 seconds left in the third quarter. Now new score. Iowa 13 and Texas Tech 10. Many 
Premier Animal Ball, presented by Siemens. <laughs> the amazing thing, they asked Coach Leach if he was surprised that uh, Texas Tech sold their first 25,000. And he said, no, absolutely not. We have such great fans. I was just amazed at how quickly they were sold out. It was like in less than two days. Then they continued to get more tickets. Iowa turned back in 300, which went immediately. But over 10,000 more with the Red Raider fans. So they are in the majority here. Ivory McCann, the deep man number 36 for the Red Raiders. He returned that last one from, what, six yards deep? Very deep in the end zone. Very high on these kickoffs. Good coverage kicks. McCann hurdles a man and tries to get to the 20, and he will not. Capital One Bowl Week continues on ESPN Monday night with the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Lombardi Award winner Julius Peppers leaves the North Carolina defense against Auburn. And they'll try to chase down the redshirt freshman, the long angular Jason Campbell. Monday night, 7.30 Eastern from Atlanta. You know Auburn didn't like the way that season ended for them, so uh, they get one more chance to try to win a game before the season closes out. Five LSU and Alabama. Yep. 501 remaining third quarter. Stunning up front of that defensive line. Kingsbury throws to his open man at the 22-yard line, and that's Peters. Mickey Peters will take it to the 25, and it's going to be a gain of about six on the play. You talked about Campman only having two tackles, but he's so far out. This is not a game for a defensive end. He's trying to work against Daniel Loper here. But those splits have removed him from the game, and it becomes an all-passing game. This is like flag football uh, in the backyard, and it's not a game for defensive ends. Yeah, he's in a different zip code uh, for the guys that are playing the defensive tackle positions. Now with a three-man rush. They come with the running play to Ricky Williams. Quickly, Iowa comes up and defends that. I mean, they sprint toward him because they know that if Williams can turn the corner on him, he has the speed to take it home very quickly. I like this play call because you take advantage of a defensive end. All of a sudden, it's rush passing and rushing the passer. Now he goes inside. Daniel Loper seals him inside, and Ricky Williams gets outside for a pretty good game. Third down. They need about one for the first. That was a play to help you tackle. Well, now it is going to be third down at about six. Loper, it appeared, came off the ball. Sometimes, Ron, a defensive signal will be called, and an offensive lineman will hear that and move. And I don't know if that happened on that Fire play or not. Ball start on the offense. Five-yard penalty remains third down. Looked like something drew them off. There were about three of them at the same time. Well, that's a good point. See, I think Iowa moved. So somebody may have said, move. And like that, and it may be close to the hut call, and all of a sudden your offensive lineman, they're ready to go. So the new line of scrimmage to the 24. They need to take it out to the 29. Third down, Texas Tech. Tricks of those defensive guys. Kingsbury, pressure, going to be set. Cole, first time that they've gotten to him to get the sack this afternoon. Yep. Cal Cole and Cole played nine games as a true freshman. He even thought about quitting the football team in 1999. His mother and brother flew up from Florida and talked him into staying. So uh, the Iowa fans are sure glad he stayed. Beat Jason May, the offensive tackle. That was just a good bull rush right there. Clinton Great House, the youngster out of Roswell, New Mexico, back to kick. And good coverage, too, Ron, because Kingsbury had no place to throw. Very high, not real long. Hill 
running up and makes the catch at the 49. Good play on his part. How many times do we see a guy run away from it and then it bounces another 20? 36 yards in the kick, and Iowa's will stay right here in the closing moments of the third quarter with excellent field position. The one thing I've seen out of Iowa here in the third quarter, Kyle McKinn doesn't look as comfortable as he did in the first quarter. Now that may have something to do with what Greg McMacken's doing on defense, but if he gets hot right now, you got great field position, your defense is playing well, you need to take this one in if you're an Iowa Hawkeye. That's Jensen, the backup tight end, and here they come with a reverse to Hill. Gets by one tackle, gets by a second, and Hill will finally be stopped at the 44 by Jonathan Hawkins. Two things happened on that play. Aaron Hunt was right at home. He did what he had to do. Now, all of a sudden, Kyle McCann becomes a blocker here and really picks up a pretty good key block here. There's the pitch, or there's the reverse. McCann, now watch McCann block right here. Just ball in front of the defensive lineman. Clayton Harmon made him go around and opened it up for a six-yard gain. Dallas Clark, number 44, the tight end, comes back into the ball game. I'm surprised that they have not gotten him more involved yeah, in his just, offense. Just sit tight. They're going to go to him. Yep, there he is. is right there. Makes the catch. And this youngster, in the video I watched and in just talking to, to other coaches, Mike, he, he is an offensive force now. 34 catches coming into this game. And what the Iowa coaches talk most about him is the fact that he gets yards after the catch. That's the old option route made famous uh, by the Bengals. Well, he also did a nice job of coming back to the football, yeah. not allowing those defensive job. backs yeah, to come Lindian, up and knock it down. Lindy and Fani, when he worked for uh, Forrest Gregg and uh, Bill Walsh, a lot of those option routes started with those two men. Yeah, they got him open again. If they go to him, it's going to go long and oh. overthrown Dodge is the man they were looking for. And Ron, I think something happened in the... Uh, the throwing motion of Kyle McCann. He wasn't ready for the post. He almost double clutched it. He had Tim Dodge wide open. See, watch him. He's trying to look at the tight end. Now he just overthrew it. He's got Dodge one running wide open here. Whew. Does he ever? 14 of 18, 108 yards for McCann. At a time was 12 of 12 in this ball game. Here comes the blitz right up the middle. Running play goes right by it. Revain will take it to the 33. Hawkins makes still another tackle. Here's where Texas Tech's been good in the second half on third down. Iowa came into this game 49% on third down, which means that's pretty good. Uh, but Half the time you're making third downs uh, and keeping those chains alive. But Texas Tech has been pretty good here in the second half on third downs. Cunningham is back in the ball game on this drive. Big number 74 at right guard, a senior out of Iowa City, 6 4 3 0 5. Third down line to make is the 26. Short drop, throws the pass complete to Dodge, and he'll be wrestled down at the 29 going to be about four short as Hanson would not let the receiver get away from him. Now he got a decision whether to go for the first down or kick the field goal here. Knowing that you're going to give up a first down field position wise if you give it back to him. That's, a, that's longer right here. I thought it was fourth and two. It's about fourth and three. They may They'll wait till the quarter runs out. And, uh, so we'll take the decision. And time out with them. And as we head to the final 15 minutes of play, our score remains Iowa 13 to 10. Right back. Iowa 13 to 10. And right now the chess match is going on. Mike, which team are they going to send out there? Is it the kicking team or is it the offense? Looks like the field goal kicker. And you talked about kicking off how high he gets the ball. You can see he's hit from 36 and 31. He missed from 38. On to a 10. A 
So this is going to be an attempt to 46 yards from the near hash mark. Bradley, the holder. Good pass. Plenty of distance. He split it. And the attempt is good. I mean, Kenning is excited. So in the opening play of the fourth quarter, he puts Iowa up by six points, 16 to 10. Boy, he gets good height on this football run. He's got good distance. Good hold by David Bradley, the punter. Good snap. His longest this year, 47. His career long is 49. So the ESPN game track to open the second half. Texas Tech, eight plays, 65 yards, and they got on the board with, uh, with ease. Very impressive. But then this interception right here, picked up by Big Derek Pickens, the senior out of Houston, Texas, by way of Kilgore Junior College. And Iowa rushing yardage 146 in this ballgame, getting a good performance out of uh, Grevin, who was coming to replacing Betts. Jeremy Allen shaken up, still on the sideline, and we'll look to see if he comes back out on the field on this series. As you look at Betts, aggravated a left hamstring, and it's been a frustrating day for him. That's as close as he's gotten to the action. He played in two series, but did not contribute a bunch. Reminds us of the game we had, Texas Tech, when Spike Dykes played Iowa. Hansbart yep. uh, was hurt for the game. From three yards deep for the end zone. McCann. And he's going to take it to the 20-yard line. Flags are down, way back down the field. 22-yard return for Ivory McCann. In a very well-officiated football game. On the play. It's going to be holding against Texas Tech. Reese Davis, let's go back to you. What do you got for us? Run inside that combo. K-State and Syracuse supposed to be a defensive struggle, but James Mungro gets loose. He's going to go 65. Watch number 74. Kevin Sampson right there. Got a couple of guys. Great blocking from the offside. Mungro goes to the house. It's 7-0 with K-State. Now march back down inside the Houston 20. Friday. Our situation, 16 to 10. Iowa leads it. Mike, that is the first major penalty of the ball game. Yeah, the WAC, a uh, WAC officiating group, an all-star group from the WAC, and they've done a fine job. Mungro strikes for Syracuse. You like this? Got to like that name. James Mungro. First and 10 after the penalty, scrimmaging from their own nine-yard line. Kingsbury looks for a safety bound, gets this one out just a little too far at the 25-yard line, trying to pick up Francis, Carlos Francis, the sophomore out of Fort Worth. Carlos Francis did exactly what you want a receiver to do. When your quarterback scrambles, you scramble with him. And uh, Cliff Kingsbury just threw it wide, had him open. Big series right here for Texas Tech's offense. Leach has seen some good quarterbacks at uh, Tim, Tim Couch at uh, Kentucky. And he said Kingsbury reminds him in some ways of uh, Tim Couch when he was in college. Kingsbury gets by that first pressure, throws it long and incomplete. And I'll tell you what, he had to play defensive back there, speaking of Francis. Otherwise, that ball is going to be picked off by Sanders. Yeah, Aaron Campman, Ron, had a shot at Cliff Kingsbury and missed him. And you get frustrated in a ball game when you're a defensive end. All of a sudden, you beat the block and you go inside of Daniel Loper and you just miss a shot. And here's the... Uh, Good if job. Francis is knocking yeah. that down. He wasn't trying to catch it. Walker gets off the field in time so that they don't get a substitution violation. Third down. They need to take it out to the 19-yard line. He's going to run it, and he's not going to have the first down. Yeah, is the man who pushed 
pushed him out of bounds. Yeah, Eric Camman's showing you why he is a great defensive player. Mike Dolezal, the middle linebacker, is the one who really forced the play, got him out of the pocket, had a shot at him in the end zone. Not a good shot, but he was putting pressure on. You can see Camman run the field, and that's one of the problems you have when you're split so wide. Uh, pursuit in a football game by Iowa, but uh, Aaron Cameron showed great pursuit on that play. Texas Tech trying to hurriedly get that punting unit on. Fifth time that they would have punted today. Iowa almost a little late in getting out their punt return team. Good hanging spiral. This is a good coverage kick. It's going to come out of bounds in the near sideline, and now let's see where they walk up the linesman, it looks like it's going to be at the 31-yard line. That's 51 on the kick. Yeah, Clinton Greathouse is going to be in the NFL someday. 4.7 on the hang time. He gets great height on his punts. Mike, let's take a timeout. 14-15 left in our game. With one Aaron Kemp, number 54, the 6'6", 285, 290 pound tackle for Iowa. A young man who holds every snap sacred. When he was being recruited, he narrowed down to two schools, Iowa and Nebraska, which means he could be out in Pasadena getting ready for the national championship. But he chose courage to come to Iowa. After the bowl loss in Sun Bowl 1997, as a freshman the following year, he stood up and told the seniors, we will go to a bowl. Rarely in college football, Ron, do we see a fifth-year senior in his one and only ever bowl visit. Aaron Kepler, great, great career. Well, sometimes the stats are not telling. His presence has been felt. You can ask Texas Tech. As Griffin goes straight ahead of the running play, he'll take it across the 35 to the 36. Harmon holding on to him, number 74. Also, Saylor is down here on the tackle again. Saylor has been on a lot of those today. We talk about Kim and... Uh, what he's done in this football game, uh, he has not been as active as he would have been in a normal Big Ten game, but he's a team guy, and he's come up with a couple big plays here when they needed him in the second half. Well, you documented it well with the huge splits that Texas Tech uses. A defensive end really has a problem yeah. being a big part of the play, but he has forced some issues, particularly here in the second half. Clark in motion, the flags are down, and that's probably going to be motion against Iowa. Prior to the snap, ball start on the offense, five-yard penalty remains second down. Ball start, I know we were talking about Mike investing with officials. Illegal procedure has not been in the, in the rule book now for some time, but it, it's that's a general term that can cover several things. But it, it's usually when a guy, they don't have six men at the line of scrimmage or in that situation right there where they had movement before yes. the ball was snapped. Jeremy Allen back in the ball game. Glad to see that. Went out with that shoulder. Almost intercepted. Sailor. That was disgusted with himself. Yeah, that was a play, Ron, either a mix-up by Chris Oliver, the receiver, or Kyle McCann, because uh, Chris Oliver stops on this route. It's whether it's a hitch or a slant, and he just doesn't look for the ball. It's his ball, and I believe Chris Oliver gave up on the route a little too soon for Kyle McCann. Three of seven for McCann in the second half for 15 yards after being 12 of 13 for just over 100 yards in the first half. They need to take it out to the 41-yard line or give it back to the Red Raiders. Here comes a blitz off the corner. They pick it up nicely. Pass is caught by Clark, the tight end, and not going to get out of the grasp of two defenders, Anthony Terrell, one of them. And we've talked about the punting problems of Iowa again. Uh, Texas Tech, I'm sure, is going to try to come after this football. David Bradley's been up for the challenge today. Redshirt freshman punter. 6'2", 205. He came to, as a quarterback and a punter to Iowa. Nope, they got the return on. Beautiful kick. Very high. Walker going all the way back to the 11-yard line. And he's tackled immediately. Boy, that's good coverage. Sanders downfield, 49 on the kick, and a minus three on the return. Great punt by David Bradley. Good 
coverage. There's Sanders right there. Bob Sanders right down the field. Now, how big is that in the fact that Texas Tech, again, is going to start around their own 10-yard line? Make them go the field. We'll keep an eye on Campman and see if he can be disruptive again. That's Welker, and Welker is going to be stopped after a very short game. Well, that's a great play by Dolezal, the middle linebacker. He played that like a middle linebacker should. Scraped off and makes the play. Wes Welker coming around you. You're going to see number 39 come into a picture. The middle linebacker, sideline to sideline play by Dolezal. Nice tackle. Second down, Texas Tech. Kingsbury. Boy, that ball went right through his hands. That's Anton Page. He may have lost that somehow, Ron, because that, that was a catchable ball. Yeah, he was a junior college All-American. Big target at uh, 6'5", 205. Remember who was hot in the first half when the, Nehemiah Glover, number 88, checking into the football game. Now, he was the guy that was explosive. He's going wide to the left. See if Kingsbury looks for his uh, favorite target tonight, today. Flags are down, right up in the middle, well overthrown. He wanted Mickey Peters. Well, this, uh, if this penalty is on Texas Tech now, looks like it's going to be on uh, offside. Well, that's the thing that really hurts you defensively when you get a stop and then a penalty. Well, tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern, a special ABC Monday Night Football Holiday Bash. Baltimore Ravens taking on Keyshawn Johnson. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers as both teams try to keep playoff hopes alive. Join the Monday Night Countdown crew 7.30 to get you set for the special Saturday Night Edition of NFL Football. One of my favorite players plays for Tampa Bay, Ward Dunn. Yeah, mine One of the too. the finest Mike. individuals you'd ever meet. Really like that young fellow. We got to know him as an underclassman of Florida State. Gets this one complete quickly to Francis, and Francis breaks it out. We may get another 15. The official did not throw the flag, but he got hit well out of bounds. That is a 48-yard play. Steen finally got him out of bounds. You go back to the offside, and that's demoralizing when you stop a team like Texas Tech and all of a sudden you give him another down. Now Carlos Francis ran through some tackles, makes a good cutback, and you're right, they could have been called for hitting him out of bounds. He's way out of bounds. <laughs> Big offside penalty against Iowa. Again, Iowa taking pursuit angles that were not good on that play, particularly D.J. Johnson, number five. Ricky Williams, not much there. Kloss, Jared Kloss, a sophomore out of West Des Moines, makes his first stop of the afternoon. And Ron, we've talked about the great job that Norm Parker has done on the sideline. His son, Jeff, is here with him, uh, 31 years old, special, uh, a special individual. So uh, he's close by his daddy's side. But Norm Parker's pulling all the right calls for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Nervous right now with his second down and Tech on the move. They can make it happen so quickly. Kingsbury dumps this one off. Ricky Williams up the sideline, breaks a couple of tackles, and then gets knocked out of bounds. Inside the 25, Bob Sanders hitting. That's enough for the first down. See, that's what you're talking about. George Lewis, number 50, has a chance to make the play on Ricky Williams and make it a, just a couple-yard gain right here. But he gets juked 
And then all of a sudden, seven yards later, seven yards later, Grant Steen has to make the tackle. You see how tough a guy like Ricky Williams is? I mean, oh. he knew he's going to get punished going down that sideline that way, but he knew he had to have the first down. So he moves and chains. Of the 23, Kingsbury puts it in the stomach of Williams, tries to break it out, and he does. Williams tripped up from behind after a gain of almost 10, and if Steen doesn't get him, Mike, I think he's gone for six. Well, this is why the splits, this is a delayed draw, and the splits really help this play because it widens the defense. Look at the splits between the tackle and the guard. Now they're going to delay the draw. Now all of a sudden, Ricky Williams pops through another missed tackle, and they're down inside the 15-yard line. Montgomery guessed going back inside. He got picked off in the middle, and that was the hole that they needed to get Ricky Williams free. Another Texas Tech first down. Kingsbury lobs this one. Has it complete. Very short gain to Mickey Peters. Here's what happens here. Oh, sh field shrinks. So now, all of a sudden, you're running all these zone routes with limited area. Boy, yeah, you, you talk about Iowa now shooting themselves in the foot. That offside that penalty offside. becomes big because this drive was stopped. Keep an eye on number 88, Nehemiah Glover, the redshirt freshman out of Lamarck, Texas. Pressure from the outside, going to be sacked. That's Barr. The second time that they've gotten to him, and what a huge play because it's going to bring up third down and very long. Yeah, Joe Tiller, the Purdue football coach, said this front four was the most physical front four he played all year. Fred Barr, the linebacker, the defensive line that absorbs all the blocks. Fred Barr comes in and makes the sack on Kingsbury. Now here's Glover, Ron. He's all the way to the left side. He's been the big play wide receiver eighth, up the top. Eighth play of the drive coming up. Kingsbury right over the middle. Got him open and he held on. Welker. Iowa State. Uh, Iowa says incomplete. But the official said no. He juggled it, but he caught it. Boy, it looked like he dropped that football now. That was a good catch. Wes Welker on the catch, a good hit. Let's see what happens on this play. He gathered it yeah, in. Yeah, he did. He gathered it in. Good Pagel, hit was by right Pagel. Mm -hmm. Pagel was right there. Pagel was right there. Came down with it, secured it. Well, it's you really talk about concentration. Yeah, yeah, you talk about a, some catches today that we've seen. This has been a well-played football game by two real well-coached football teams, and uh, they play with great effort. These fans in the Alamo Bowl and uh, Sylvania and Siemens can be proud of this uh, game because it's been a fine football game. Well, when we come back, we will talk about uh, should Texas Tech go for it or will they go for the field goal? We'll take a timeout. 8.32 left in the ball game. Iowa by six. All around the world, Siemens is energizing the cities and towns we live in. We engineer new ways to efficiently generate, distribute, and use power. And by providing energy to people everywhere, we're giving them the power to live better. The cars from Chrysler. Exhilarating performance. Incredible engineering. And of course, eye-catching designs. Hold on. I lost my wallet and my credit card was in it. You do have a Capital One No Hassle card, don't you? Mm. Well, don't worry. There's not another human for miles.
worried about losing your credit card? With Capital One's No Hassle Card, you're not liable for a penny. Plus, get the nation's lowest long-term fixed rates and no telemarketing. <laughs> Monday, Brandon Doman and BYU stare down Louisville. BYU Louisville, the AXA Liberty Bowl. 4 o'clock Monday on ESPN. 16 to 13 in the Syl Sylvania Animal Bowl, presented by Siemens. Cooks Leach looking on, and they have elected to go for the field goal. Great house to hold, Robert Treese. This one almost in the middle of the field. 12 to 15 on the year. Just work both these staffs working hard. And let's go down to the sideline. Adrian Karsten. Very proud popper right now. About 10 rows up from the sidelines run. Tim Kingsbury clips that. 26 years as a high school football coach. They finally got some production out of that drive. Tim, if you had a chance to talk to Clip right now, what would you tell him? How would you coach him? Well, I'd tell him just keep playing the next play and forget the last play. Just keep plugging away and good things are going to happen because it's just a matter of time. How do they win this game now? Eight and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter, number three. Well, we need to get a good stop on defense and then we need to come out and execute. We need to run the ball, you know, a little bit and then mix up the underneath passes there and I think we got a chance. I'll convey that to Coach Leach. How many tickets for the family from New Braunfels only 20 miles away today? Well, we had a lot of calls. I tell you what, my wife uh, deferred them to the ticket office. I know that we probably got uh, three or four hundred people from New Braunfels here at least. <laughs> 301, Ron. I defer to you. Okay. That's, uh, that's great. New Braunfels, a very popular community, has a huge water park, and it's in the hill country of Central Texas. And they've got to be very proud of uh, young Mr. Kingsbury. Chris Oliver. Breaks it out big over the 30-yard line. Fred Russell, I beg your pardon. Coming up after the game, Sports Center with uh, David Lloyd and Chris McKendry. Petito returns to Kentucky. Coaching change in San Diego. Tampa's key to victories. And for our extended post-game coverage, here with the Sylvania Alamo Bowl. Tune over to ESPN News immediately following the game. with still another tackle. He'll knock him down at around the 36-yard line. Now, he reminds me of, of Zach Thomas, who we saw several years ago. Jonathan Hawkins has been very active in this football game. Greg McMacken trying again to come up with a stop. You know, I was talking to him last night, and he, he said we, we're 6-0 when we score over 38 points. And... Uh, if we, we need to score some points and hold Iowa down. Hawkins, nine tackles. Seven of those are solo. Reving waits for his blocker, and he runs tough to the 40-yard line. They're going to have third down and need a couple. The Acock came up, and Acock absorbed a pretty good lick himself. He had to hit and take out the convoy. Probably the most valuable player on offense for Iowa has been Aaron Grevin because of replacing Liddell Betts, who you figured Iowa was going to have to run the football and keep the ball away from Texas Tech. Treving has been a good replacement for Betts. Very large play in this Alamo Bowl right here. The clock has just gone under seven minutes to play. Iowa leading by three, and they need to take the football to the 42-yard line. Grevin. Fighting, I think he got it. I think from the spot, boy, this is going to be very close. Aaron Hunt is down at the bottom of that pile. It's close. I don't think he made a run. You know, you're right from where the spot was made. Yeah, let's see now. Well, let's see where they're real close to that yellow line now. Yeah. But I think he got to pass the yellow line.
We've had a lot of close measurements in this football game. <laughs> You're right. Game of inches. <laughs> this is the biggest one of the game. Didn't make it. Mike, you got to kick this one away, don't yeah, you? Yeah, without a doubt. Kirk Ferentz looking on. And Manny Matsakis, the uh, special teams coach of Texas Tech, still looking for a return or a punt block. You know what, they're Texas gonna play Tech, safe. they're going to play with their defense on yep. the field, not the return team, because they don't believe Iowa. They think they might run a fake. They don't have anybody back either, so Iowa's got a good chance of placing this ball inside the 20. Well, it's a bad kick. Straight up, ball is not going to turn over. It takes a huge Texas Tech bounce. Boy, did they get fortunate there. <laughs> That's only 27 yards on the kick. So we'll take a timeout. 6.21 left in our ball game. Red Raiders have the football back and they're trailing by three. In beautiful new Omega cabinets from Menards and take an extra 10% off when you use your Menard big card. This 30-inch oak bath vanity is on sale $239. A 48-inch white model is $469. Add convenience with Orbital Holdings TV wall arms. This model holds 19 to 27-inch TVs and includes this free 13-inch swivel base, $39.99. Plus, save 10% when you use your Menard big card. Save big money at Menards. This is Bowflex. An entire gym and one easy to use machine. Strength training with Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. One simple workout. 20 minutes a day. Three days a week. Bowflex is real. The results are real. Call right now for a free video and brochure. Bowflex. The power is yours. Special Saturday edition of Monday Night Countdown. Join Mike, breaking news TJ, Sterling, and Mort as they catch up with all the NFL news and get you ready for the Ravens and the Bucks. Presented by UPS, 7.30 p.m. tonight on ESPN. Later on Sports Center, we'll show you the reception Rick Pitino received at his old Kentucky home. Why stopping all set could be the key to beating Tampa Bay. And a last-second finish in the Motor City Bowl. Join me, David Lloyd, and Chris McKendry for Sports Center after the game. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2001 Sylvania Alamo Bowl is presented by Sylvania, the proud sponsor of the Alamo Bowl. Sylvania, brilliant life. And in part, Mike Chrysler, drive equals love. Mike Godfrey, let's go, let's go back and, and talk about the situation. Tech left their defense on, had nobody back deep. That's, that was a heck of a time for a bad punt. They could have pinned him very deep. They really did. They had a punt safe on, and uh, Iowa did not take advantage of it. They had a chance to pin him inside the 10. This is the second best starting position for Texas Tech in the second half. The other, on the kick out of bounds, went to the 35. That ball thrown too far in front of Glover. Glover had double coverage out there waiting to greet him. Here's the punt, Ron, and here's a man 15 yards deep. That's a linebacker. So you got all this room to place this football down here, and all of a sudden Iowa's got a chance to pin him down here. But they get a bad punt away, and, uh, and Texas Tech now needs to take advantage of that good field position. That punt went straight backwards after it hit the turf. Kingsbury. Back over the middle, throws it too tall and almost intercepted by Steve. <laughs> Flag down, Ron. That's either usually uh, ineligible receiver or holding. holding. Yeah. yeah, it's going to be holding, Michael. And with all that scrambling, and sometimes the big folks up front can't get it turned back around and, and wind up with uh, with an injury. My good. But hit. this situation right here, Carlos Francis 
took uh, a heck of a lick right Derek here. Derek Pagel. Now Derek Pagel will strike you in the secondary. And Junior. while we have a moment here, let's check in with Reese Davis. And, Ron, you want to talk about good field position after a miscue in the punting game. Insight.com, Syracuse and Kansas State. That is Mike Ronsick who fumbled it. David Tyree there to slam him down. You'll recall he blocked the punt in the Virginia Tech game. James Mungro cashed in. Extra point was blocked. It's 13-3 Cuse. All righty. That, that's unusual for K-State yeah. to, to make those kind of errors. Uh, Syracuse doesn't need any help. They're, no. good. They're good enough. They have improved. They might have to break up the Big East after these bowl games because they're rolling on. Yeah, they are. Carlos Francis. He good to see him. Hit. Yeah, he really did. You see him grab his head. A head-high shot like that, very dangerous indeed. And that's what you... That's what you want to do as a defensive player. You want to let them catch the short passes and punish them. So it's third down, and they need to take it to the 41-yard line. Tech is trailing, 16 to 13. Kingsbury stepping up into the pocket, drives it complete. He has run, and uh, Cliff Kingsbury puts this ball right in here on the break, and Iowa plays it pretty well. Now, this is the game. You talked about Cliff Kingsbury making a statement. This drive may be his statement for next year. Welker, four catches, 39 yards, and two of them just with traffic all around him. Running play, Ricky Williams tries to take it off the left side. He'll go for one yard, and that's about it. Guess what uh, Kingsbury told me at the press conference the other day? I said, have you ever played in the Dome Stadium? He said, yeah, I have in Houston, but not here. But he said, I came to see a game that Drew Brees brought Purdue from behind to defeat Kansas State. And he said, I fell in love with Drew Brees, already had been. But he said, that game just really turned me on the way he directed his team in the last two minutes and took them down the field to score. Let's see if he can do the same thing with 5'10 left. Kingsbury drills it, has it complete near sideline at the 45 to Mickey Peters and pushed out of bounds, but not after getting the first down. It's interesting you talk about Cliff Kingsbury, you know, watching a game or watching Drew Brees. And he, I'm sure they watched television last night and watched Major Applewhite lead his Texas football team back. And uh, been some great bowl games this year where quarterbacks have brought their teams uh, back and won some football games. Byron Leftwich for Marshall, one of them. Well, the head coach at halftime, you uh, remember Adrian's interview with him? He was chapped. Short. He was chapped, just to, to put it uh, mildly. And let's see if that got the momentum that they needed to go in here in the second half. Ricky Williams is going to take it for a very short gain, and Barr is right there to stop the play. Matter of fact, the shortest interview at halftime ever. <laughs> I thought Adrian did well. Yeah, he asked one question, that was it. That's right. You got him to come right to the point. <laughs> oh, my. 16 to 13, our score. Now we're under five minutes to play. Clock running down. Texas Tech trying to keep this thing going. Well, they know to try to set up the middle screen, throws this one and gets it completed. Williams has the ball taken away from him. Sanders on the big hit. This was a great job by Jared Claus, number 90. And the Iowa defensive line, when you come free, like he does, you're going to see number 90 come free. And all of a sudden, he said, oh, it's got to be a screen. I'm going to move back in all the defensive linemen. Aaron Campman felt it, too. You know what, Mike? Kingsbury is going to apologize to Ricky. He never oh, yeah. should have thrown that ball to him. out there. He could have gotten him hurt. In fact, he may have. Bob Boy. Sanders with a hit again. Should have just thrown that one away. It is third down. They need to take it to the 32-yard line. Five of 12 on third down conversions. 
Walker's been the big guy lately. Drills this one. Has it complete for the first down to Nehemiah Walker. Well, they're going to blow it dead. The officials say he was down at the 30-yard line. It'll be a first down Texas Tech. And that's going to bring uh, some booze uh, from the Iowa faithful. Nehemiah Glover, number 88, gets hit. And forward progress. Sapp is the man making the tackle. His knee is down yeah. before the ball comes out, I believe. Yeah. The official was pretty adamant there, pointing to the turf, saying down. So it's first down, Red Raiders, just inside the 30. Three minutes, 59 seconds left to play in this Alamo Bowl. That one's going to be well underthrown. Francis was the man on the near sideline that he wanted. And that'll give everybody on the field a chance to stop and catch their breath for a moment. Every play now becomes the ball game. Your defensive lineman, you rush. You're an offensive lineman, you got to protect Kingsbury. Zone, heavy zone coverage by Iowa. Trace on the sideline, will it be another field goal attempt? Or will they advance and pick up another first down? Great protection, gets this one complete. Now here comes in a late flag, and folks, that's going to be holding. The referee threw it at the last moment. On the play. Cliff Kingsbury has a lot of time, Ron. Of course, the holding helps get the time, but a three-man rush. When you're throwing against eight back there, there's not many holes to, to, to find. Mike, take a look at what Iowa's doing as they, as they converse with the officials, and here comes the call. Those, those defensive backs are having to run so much. They're not asking the corners to come back into no. the huddle. They are staying out there on the no, outside. It's a wise move a lot of teams use. Norm Parker just keeping his team lined up. They'll get the signal call. They'll all look to Norm Parker. They all get the call. What a great job defensively today for he, Norm Parker. He really has. Iowa football staff, defensive staff. Second down and 20. Kingsbury drills this one. Has it complete? That's Mickey Peters at the 30. So they get 10 of it back. It'll be third down and 10. Bill Walsh always had the uh, theory that if you have third and 20, get at least 10 back and give yourself a shot on third down. Now they're back on third and uh, 10, 10, 11 yards. Mike Leach's offense, he said he stole from the uh, lot from the 49ers, a lot from BYU, a lot from John Jenkins and uh, Houston, the running shoot. New Alamo Bowl record, Kingsbury's 27 completions this afternoon. He wants to break it big because that would mean his team has a chance for victory. Kingsbury runs up into the pocket, got a lot of room, and he'll slide down at the 20. Mike, I think he got the first down. Sanders was there. No, he did not. He's going to miss it by just inches. Wise move again by Cliff Kent Kingsbury. Trying to dive for the first down, trying to get there. He's a yard short. He got a good spot, too. Now you're not a running team. Good running team, you're going to talk it over. Fourth and a half a yard, what do you take to go for the first down or take the field goal? Well, we will have a commercial timeout to think it over. 2.09 left in the ball game. Sunday NFL Countdown. Sunday mornings at 11 Eastern, only on ESPN. Vacation Kit and join us on the river. 
you know what it means to be focused, to be persistent, using the best of your abilities to reach your goals. That's why you choose Pacific Life. With the strength of over $340 billion in managed assets and more than 130 years of performance, the Pacific Life family of companies has the financial strategies to take you where you want to go. Rely on the strength of Pacific Life. San Antonio and it would appear that Texas Tech is going to go for a 37 yard field goal attempt on the previous field goal that they tried before the half Iowa did not rush the field goal well, let's see if they do on this one or not it's Robert Treese the junior out of Converse Texas and his kick is right downtown And he's right down Broadway. minutes left to play in our ball game. The quite a turnaround as far as Texas Tech is concerned. Uh, Iowa owned the first half. Yeah. And that's what I say, Ron. It, they're only behind 10-3 and Iowa had the ball over 20 minutes and uh, so Texas Tech was not in bad shape. Now here's where Iowa, if you're Texas Tech, you don't want to return. Iowa needs a good return to get good field position. Well, you don't want to kick it to him. Two minutes. No. He'll, I'd kick it away from him. Fred Russell is also back there. A little speedster out of Inkster, Michigan. Fred Russell can take it the distance. Now he is fast. Now this is a good deep boot right here. Three yards deep and Hills is out. Give it a try. 10, 15, slows down. Big mistake. Not even going to make it to the 20 yard line. And it was Joe Norman who makes another tackle on special teams. Reese Davis. Ron, you and Mike were talking about Syracuse's improvement. And boy, the offense is showing it in the inside.com bowl against Kansas State. R.J. Anderson going up top to Johnny Morant. K-State giving up three touchdowns in his last five games. They've given up three to James Mungro today. It's 19 to three. Well, you also have to wonder, they lost their defensive coordinator yeah. who got the head coaching job, and you have to wonder about the distraction for the K-State team. Just on that play, you wonder about uh, their plan, whether they yeah. wanted to be there or not. Uh, Syracuse taking it to them. McCann, lots of time, gets it out to Jeremy Allen, and Allen takes it out over the 30-yard line. Clutton's making the tackle, but it's a gain of 16 yards. Jeremy Allen coming out of the backfield, just a circle route. 
third out the linebackers and uh, Kyle McCann just waits for him to get open. Pretty good game, safe play. On first down, quick out to the far sideline to dodge. He'll step right out of bounds to stop the clock. 137 showing. Here's the first play when you go to two-minute offense. You want something safe. Draw, screen, circle route out of the backfield. He's going to come right here. Jeremy Allen picks up good yardage after the catch. A couple missed tackles. We got Khalil Hill inside right here, Ron. Moved him inside as a slot. Drills this one. He's got Hill. Boy, was the cushion huge on him. You don't want to get burned, but you don't want that much cushion either. Well, when you move him inside, you get him against the strong safety. You get him against Kevin Curtis, and he's going to run a corner route here. And the clear out right here, so you got him wide open on the outside. That's McClendon who came over to force him out of bounds, but Iowa still got 90 seconds left and they're 42 and a half yards away somebody protect better step up and make a big player this thing's not going to go to overtime Still got hill inside on the up, upper side here comes pressure off the corner gonna run it mccann 40 35 after 30 he'll get all he can and was hit out of bounds now iowa wants a flag but i'll make a point to you Texas Tech probably should have gotten the aid of a 15-yard penalty earlier on the long pass completion, and the officials chose not to call this yeah, one as well. Ricky Saylor uh, with the hit close to the out-of-bounds. Kyle McCann again makes good decisions in this afternoon's football game. Tucks the football in to see where he gets hit. No, nah, he was on the field. He didn't hit anything in moves as long as they're in the field. <laughs> That's right. Sailor can't stand there and look down at his feet. I mean, he's going to get run over by a 6'5 quarterback if he does. We'd like to thank you for attending today's game. Kirk Ferentz is trying to get a hold of the official, and they're not coming over. Now the referee goes over to the sideline to explain to him. Well, like I said, Kirk is going to look at the video and realize that the Tech player was two and a half yards outside of bounds when he got hit and there was no flag. So the officials try not to make a difference in the ball game. Let it be one or lost on the field. There's one last look. Nah, you can't call that. You want to protect the players as much as possible. That's on the field of play. -o. The other one uh, was probably more out of bounds. Oh, it was. Uh, there's no question about it. But I'm not, I'm not trying to go tit for tat. No. I'm just simply saying the officials, I think, have tried to have a common ground that, that said, you know, we're not going to make the decision that to causes somebody to win or lose. Coming up after the game, Sports Center, David Lloyd and Chris McKendry. And for our extended post-game coverage here at the Alamo Bowl, turn over to ESPN News immediately following the game. You know, the other thing that Iowa has right now, they've thrown the ball well here in the two-minute drill. They've got the running game, uh, too, to go back to. They've got plenty of time. Run the football and give it to Jeremy Allen. Well, they give it to Allen. Gets by one. Will not get by the second tackler, who is Hunt holding on for dear life, and they'll stop him at the 24. Yeah, Texas Tech's going to have to use their timeouts if they want to keep any of this clock left here, because Iowa's going to burn every second of this clock. 105, now 104, and it's coming on down. Throws this one away. That's grounding. Here comes the flag. Boy, what a mistake. Mike, now they're out of field goal. Yeah. What a bad mental well, you error. Got, you got to give credit to Greg McMack and the defensive coordinator because he's he's coming after Iowa. And the last two plays in the draw play had an inside blitz on, and he brought the blitz on Kyle McCann, a poor decision. Tough thing about this call, also, it's loss of down. 
Yeah, just a pressure coming from the outside. Kyle McCann just makes a bad decision. Hunt again coming with the pressure. You see big number nine. The safest pass receiver right now is Khalil Hill. Right here on the inside. Third down. Here comes pressure off the corner again. McCann's pass incomplete. Thrown short. Hill is the man that he wanted, and that was dangerous. There were tech players in the vicinity. Yeah, we talked about all the time, and uh, they chose to throw, throw the ball two out of the three times. Now they're going to leave it up to their field goal kicker, Kading. And Texas Tech going to kind of freeze him a little bit. Tried to ice him up, so we're going to take a timeout. 49 seconds left. We'll be right back. Welcome to McDonald's. We're sending our best to Salt Lake City, too, to serve the world's best athletes. Congratulations to the over 400 winners of McDonald's Global Crew Competition. Welcome to McDonald's. McDonald's, a worldwide Olympic partner. You know, athletes are pretty well known for their superstitions, but I gotta be honest, our guys can be pretty quirky, too. How was the show, Kenny? You too. There was this one time Brian had a great show, didn't bathe for 17 days straight. Whereas this year, though, it's been a very different story. The worst had to be when Dan spilled clam chowder, Manhattan clam chowder, all over Reese. Had his best show ever. Of course, that got old for Reese really quickly. Yeah. He's in makeup. Okay. Well, here's the young man that the pressure was on right now, Nate Katie, sophomore out of Corralville, or Coralville, I should say. Iowa, 47, would tie his season long, his career best, he's 49 against Penn State. Here it comes, almost in the middle of the field. He's got distance. Everybody's looking for Kading, and he ran away from him. He ran almost all the way to the end zone. Now we're on 44 seconds. Texas Tech out of timeouts. He gets good height when he kicks the football right down Main Street. Bradley, the punter, handling the hold. And Bradley's done a very good job for Kading. Yep, he has. Look, he throws him down. That's now watch, watch Kading. He takes off running, and the team's going the other direction. Then they start looking for him. Hey, let's celebrate. I think he's heading for the fans. <laughs> so, then they catch up with him, and the celebration begins. Iowa goes on top, 19-16, to 16, with 44 ticks on the clock. Still got to kick off, so... Uh, Got to get those emotions in check. I don't remember a kickoff guy this year that gets as much height on well, the That's what I meant. Uh, Mike, the old straight-on kickers yeah. did because they tied that right. uh, toe up. Tom and they, Dempsey, Lou yeah. Groza. Yeah, they got the, the dating instant ourselves. elevation. But this kid right here, uh, he gets great distance and elevation on his kickoffs. McCann, the deep man for Texas Tech. Exceptional speed. 
speed in the 88. We'll see if they can get him into the play. Kingsbury's going to run it. And he slides down at the 30. It's going to be a gain of almost 20 yards in the play. Johnson is there. Cook Kingsbury with a good decision here, Ron. The clock stops on the first down marker, so a lot of time for the quarterback. Pickens with good uh, pressure on that play. Tech bench alive and jumping around, hoping they can not be out of this thing. And they throw this complete, and that's Peters. And Mickey Peters trying to get outside, and he does. He gets out of bounds to stop the clock. Pagel is the one who pushed him out. The Great House had that kick just before the half. Clinton Great House, I believe a 50-yard uh, field goal. Yes. So uh, he's got a strong leg. seconds left. Kingsbury got him open and there is Francis and Francis tackled at about the 44, 43 yard line. Sanders defensively. They need another play. They got an injury. Richards, Rex Richards, the junior from Midland, the right guard. Probably the best of the offensive linemen is the man who's down at the 37. Boy, I'll tell you, they're going to have to work some magic here to see or to get Great House into the ball game to have the field goal attempt. We only have 10 ticks left on the clock. Yeah, they need a corner route about 15, 20 yards and get out of bounds to get him to, a chance to come on the field. Well, if they get a 20-yard route, Mike, then they're going to have about a 48-yard attempt. Kingsbury's numbers today, 29 to 40, 310 yards and a touchdown, two interceptions. Ron, I want to say this. We, we all came into this game figuring it was going to be an offensive shootout. Two defensive coordinators and two defensive units have stole the show. Greg McMacken, the uh, fine defensive coordinator for Texas Tech, they slowed down the Iowa offense, forced them into field goals, and then Norm Parker has, and his staff, defensive staff, has called one of the great games in college football defensively. So uh, we take our hat, tip our hats to both these defensive coordinators. They slowed down the two offenses that everybody talked about coming into this game. Well, Kaden is a man who is who has the spotlight on him into the first half. This is what happened with the Great House booting one from 50 yards. No rush here. They were thinking it was a fake, and they, they messed up the snap, but then no rush by Iowa. Here comes the play. Ten seconds left. Throws it away. Five seconds left. Aaron Campman probably and Jerry Montgomery made the biggest plays of the Iowa career to date, putting pressure on Cliff Kingsbury. Five seconds showing on the clock. You figure your star players are going to come up big in big situations. Aaron Campman, Jerry Montgomery, big. Well, now it's got to be Hail Mary. They got to have a, either a catch and some luck to come away with the score or a flag to extend this ball game. Otherwise, Iowa is going to go into the record books as the victor. Throws it up very, very high into the end zone. It is tipped and intercepted by Iowa by Sanders. Taken away, nice defense. You see, 
Nehemiah Glover almost came down with that thing, and Sanders comes away with it. Now our Capital One player of the game, Nate Kading, four of five field goals, including a 47-yarder, the game winner with 44 seconds remaining. So the final score, Iowa 19 and Texas Tech 16. Coming up next, Sports Center for extended Alamo Bowl coverage. Turn over to ESPN News for interviews, commentary, and our post-game analysis. Plus, for complete game summary, log on to ESPN.com, your home for college football on the Internet. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Our congratulations to the Iowa Hawkeyes, champions of the 2001 Sylvania Alamo Bowl. Now, Sports Center. Happy Boise, Idaho, where two southern schools have come west over 2,500 miles to rack up big numbers. Louisiana Tech has averaged 35 points a game while winning the WAC title. The gunslinger, Luke McCown, has sprung our Tech into the postseason. But today, the Bulldogs face quarterback extraordinaire Woodrow Danzler and his dazzling numbers. Over 2,000 yards passing. Over 1,000 yards rushing. The only one to ever do it. Today, it's all about offense and quarterbacks. Who's is better, Clemson's or Louisiana Tech's? We find out today in the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl, live from Boise, Idaho. It's not exactly a Chamber of Commerce kind of day, unless you're trying out for the men's or women's downhill. What a matchup we've got in the ACC. Six up, five down. The Clemson Tigers come in, winners of the WAC with a 7-1 conference mark. The Bulldogs of Louisiana Tech are 7-4 overall. As the song says, the weather outside is frightful, along with J.C. Pearson. Welcome back as our Capital One Bowl week continues here on ESPN. This is the first of three terrific matchups today. You know, when you talk about number one for the Clemson Tigers, he is number one. He owns 30 passing records. He's a tailback who also happens to be a terrific quarterback. And one of the most explosive players in the history of college football. No one's been able to stop this guy because he can beat you with his arm, which is very strong, or his feet. When he runs the ball, he's just like another tailback. On the other side of the ball, we've got Luke the gunslinger McCown, a more traditional type quarterback, six foot four, very strong arm, over 3,300 yards and 28 touchdown passes on the season. You've heard it a million times in weather like this, snow, sleet, and freezing rain. Well, the offense has the advantage. The receivers know where they're going. An ex-defensive back right here. How about your thoughts? Well, defensively, it's going to be tough for both teams. On top of that, they have not played very well all season long. We take a look at the numbers. They've both given up a lot of yards, almost 30 points a game. But the key stat today, Jim, that rushing number. If you're from Clemson, South Carolina, what do you do if you get here early and three, four inches of the white fluffy stuff? You build a replica of Howard's Rock. The kickoff, the Tigers and the Bulldogs, next. <laughs>